Brenna A. First spot's coming up. You guys have been just driving me nuts. Just been trying to pull this trip together at the last minute, you know? Just work through it. After losing two pots because of shoddy rigging, when you're only making a fixed amount of money a day, you can't afford to lose a big chunk of money. Rookie captain Sean Dwyer pushes his crew to make up for the loss. Heavens to Betsy. That's a lot of crowd in there. Ninety-seven on that one, huh? Numbers, numbers, numbers. One, two, one, two, four. That's awesome. The western end is where the crab are. The numbers don't lie. A lot of runs. A lot of runs. Yeah. But you got a hundred crab. Can't run from crab. Yeah. Brit says it's all oh, smalls and females. Well, I don't really give a if you have to dig through 500 runs. You're getting 100 keepers. You're getting 100 keepers. Next. You got run. Just not efficient. Pretty ridiculous, but that's how I want to do it. That's attitude to have on deck. You're gonna be sitting there doubting my decisions. You know what? You don't know what the is going on up here. You don't know about catching crab. If you did, you wouldn't be on deck. I mean, I experienced this plenty of times. I've been on boats where guys get this attitude and they want to tell the captain what to do, and the captain brings them to the wheelhouse, puts them in their place, and they either leave or they and get back to work. The biggest mistake I could make right now is to drive away from this pile of crab. You give them a. 10 pound bag, $100 bills, he'd probably complain about the weight. That hook, it almost hit Tony in the head. You gotta call that out, Brad. I don't need a lecture from you, Pear. Everyone's at home. Screaming. I heard the one guy that yelled. Out of all the people down there, the greenhorn pair is calling out hook when the guy at the rail drops the hook. It's the guy on the rail's responsibility to call it out and to keep a handle on it. If that hook catches someone in the head, it'll knock them out or split their eye open or knock teeth out. That's a big deal. That's just sloppy on Brit's part. If you got a attitude and you're a mediocre fisherman, well, I can see where all of the uh, conflict is uh, originating from and, and starts with Brent. There's crab in that pot. That's really good. First year captain Sean Dwyer is working overtime on big numbers. This is on 24 hours, so. So 118 in that one. How long has that been in the water? 26 hours. That's a killer crowd, man. 118 in 24 hours is awesome. I'm going for two crab an hour, and that was almost five. Yo, this might be half big, but it seemed like the ones that had herring in them, we've been getting more. Crab. They don't like those like, sardines? Yeah. Well, when you think about it, it's like animals are creatures that have, they like what's around them, like what's indigenous, and even they find hair in here. It's local, it's, it's yeah. American. You could be 100% right with that because we're using these imported sardines from Morocco. Captains use different types of baits to attract crab. This school seems partial to herring. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. Good eye. Good call. 
Never underestimate a greenhorn. That's the moral of that little story right there. So switch all of these bait bags over to herring. If herring is the ticket, then that's what we'll go with. We're gonna experiment with it. Yeah, it looks like herring's fishing a lot better than the sardines, so we're gonna change our bait game from here on out. They don't like what they're eating, they're not gonna get in the pot. Simple. Now that we know the whole herring thing, um, I should change, change this quite a bit. That's an expensive mistake to make. So what are we doing here? Is this a... I'm just plotting on how I'm going to knock out Brett, make it look like an accident. It sounds like an expensive mistake to make. We should have been using herring the whole time. Really? Really? For Brett to come at me like that, like it's my fault, like I knew better, that or that little needs to say that to my face if he wants to make a difference. He's bad on deck. He likes drama and he tries to spread cancer on deck to try to get everybody against me down there. Do that, dude. One more snide comment and he's going down. Honestly, I get too much Whatever. That little guy. Burn me like that. Okay, well, we're gonna take a break. Hey, Brett, if you want to talk, just know it comes back to me. And if you piss me off enough, I'm gonna call you out on it. I'm gonna break your balls and send you home crying, looking like a little. What? I'm already like a little. What did I say? What are you talking about? What did I say? Oh, yeah. Like what? You're like, well, that's an expensive mistake to I make. I said that would be an expensive mistake. Everybody knows what you said. If you want to jab back and forth, just know that I don't lose. Uh, I guess you're, you're taking it with jabs, but I'm not being, I'm not being hateful or trying to talk about anybody. That's why I don't understand why the talking line is. No, no, no. It, it, you're totally talking. I mean, it makes you look like a, but that's besides the point. Just be careful. I'm giving you this kind of as a courtesy. If you want to bring up about, you know, any of that where it tries to make me look like I'm an idiot or incompetent, if you piss me off, I will react. And then it's game on. Seven, eight hundred in that thing. This is really fun. Stay calm. 
Stay calm! Uh, vessel set in gear, uh, I think you're about four miles off of us. Can you read me? The uh, whole panel was engulfed. Downstairs in the engine room? Yep. Okay, I'm ready. You going down? Calm down. <laughs> guy didn't answer me on the radio. You okay? Mm -hmm. You okay? Good. Do you want to, do you want to shut that main down? Oh, that's the tank one. Can you take one there's tank two. Can you take one? Take one. <coughs> yeah, but this guy melted. This, this guy melted. Ooh, that looks bad. That's a pump. That's a pump. They both fry. Okay, let's get some air. Come on, wait a minute. Come and get some air. It's not Edgar. Close that door. Right open the wheelhouse doors too. Well, I'll shut this one. Here we go. Open that wheelhouse door. Yeah, open the wheelhouse door, please. <coughs> it looks like the, uh, it looks like it was the crab pumps. Those, there's, those, that triple breaker. On number one and number two, they're just melted. And then everything was melted on top because the flames were going up. Yeah. But that's where it looks like it's to me. Because yeah. you can see it tried to trip. It was stuck dead center and it just and it just melted. And then the other breakers were still on. 340 miles from land, an electrical fire has left the northwestern dark shift and dead in the water. That's why you gotta have a watch. You know, had you guys not been on deck, and we'd just been running out, the guy in the wheelhouse wouldn't have noticed that until it was probably way too late. Wow. That's good. We're going to let it clear out completely, and then uh, see what we can do. We'll probably fire up again and see if we can get it manually. That's all I can think of. With the fire extinguished, captain and crew must assess the damage then hatch a plan to get home okay this radar is still i don't have a screen but the radar is on uh we've got everything here and i've got a gps this one's on 12 it looks like how about this guy down to emergency battery power captain sig has limited time to get the boat systems back up and running well, I mean, in the meantime, I've got manual steering. I've got main engine. Yeah. I've got direction. I just don't know how long these 12 volts are going to last on that stuff. I can, I mean, I can, I, I can turn off, I could probably turn off a couple of these radios. Yeah. That's all 110. But that, that yeah, this computer's 110, right? Uh, Let me think without that thing on my face, please. Looks like it started with this one or something. Below deck, relief skipper Edgar Hansen assesses the tangled maze of melted wires. Well, the majority of the heat's right here, so. Look at what happened. See all these strips in there? All the metal strips, that's power uh -huh. from one side to the other. I mean, we could isolate the four-cylinder all by itself, take wires out and connect onto this side. But what do we got for pumps? You'd have, uh, you got one pump here. Well, we can run on one you pump. Can, you can move, you can move one to this side. You can move anything anywhere. It's going to be daylight in a couple hours. Right. So for me, I can make headway. So let's do that. So just make sure everything's battened down, doesn't yeah. get all over here. Yep. Okay? All right. 
Well, wait till you get up there and we'll fire up. When I hear it start up, I'm going to put it right. here. Okay? Yep. While Edgar works to bring the crap pumps online, Sig will attempt to drive the damaged vessel back to Dutch. Yeah, if I got enough juice to start this thing, what, twice? If the 12 volt battery can't start the 1300 horsepower engine, the Northwestern will be at the mercy of the Bering Sea. Hey, here goes nothing. There's been crap, crap, and more crap. We're five days into this fishery and we haven't caught anything. For 36 hours, the Bering Sea crab fleet has taken a beating from a massive Arctic hurricane. The weather's always so nice right here. On top of the 70 knot winds and 30 foot seas, fishing has been non existent. That sucks. This is no way to start this thing, holy smokes. Until the raging storm moves on, captains and crews remain at the mercy of the Bering Sea. We'll just keep picking them up and searching. That's all we can do. Four hundred forty-five miles northwest of Dutch Harbor. On the 107-foot saga. Oh, dear God. Damn it! Weather's getting worse by the second. This day will not end. I just shot up here specifically to get ahead and away from everybody. I wanted my own stuff. I wanted my own glory. Fighting the final blow of the Arctic hurricane. Nothing. Captain Jake Anderson has barely dented his 470,000 pound quota. That's not good enough. Nobody likes to see bear empty pond. Still early in his career, the young skipper has much to prove. Uh, a little discouraged. I need, I need to practice, like, patience. Can you guys hear me down there? Yeah, you guys want to put those totes in the cod bin, close the doors, so you can get off deck the better. Hey, will you tell Kenny to come upstairs? With heavy weather and few crab landing in his pots. Dang it. I'm not bummed. I just, you know, I just want to, I just want to crush them. Want to crush them. Jake shuts down for the night. So you got first watch tonight. Each crew member takes wheel watch in one hour shifts. First up, deckhand Kenny Jensen. It means you cannot around. I mean, your eyes are on those waves. While the rest of the crew sleeps, Kenny's job is to make sure the boat stays clear of any foreign objects. Hey, Nikki. No. Hey, you got last watch. No problem, bro. Hey, get us to the gear by 9:30. You got it. Well, it's the next person. With the time it gets to there, I'm all, all good to go. All right, well, I'm going to get some rest. No, no sweat, bro. Let's go. Four hours sleeping in the chair proves uncomfortable. So Kenny stretches out on the wheelhouse floor. After sleeping through four shifts, Yo, wake up. Kenny wakes the last man in the rotation. 
Nick Tokman. I just got up. Uh, the rotation on here in Shenny Austin Hot is holy to me. Holy should have waken me. Should have woken me up. by Kenny. I don't know what's going on. I'm hoping that there's like a logical explanation for this. I gotta, I gotta wake Jake up. That's a quick way to get fired. Hey, will you tell Kenny to come upstairs? You want to explain to me what the f is going on? Um, last night I was doing a watch, and my stomach hurt really bad all of a sudden. And I laid down on the floor right here, and I fell asleep. Dude, you're around with something that's bigger than you. You got seven people's lives here, and it ain't that pretty out. If you have a stomach ache, then you get me up, or you get somebody else. I will cover you. That's standard issue. All right, well, my pride kind of got away on that issue. Your pride could have killed us. That's what it could have done. It breaks my heart, dude. Like, you're that selfish. You know, let's go get geared up. And... I toned it down how I wanted to react to that. You know, I really wanted to just scream. It's not really that big a deal. Boat's fine, crew's fine, power's on. Got hurt. Please let it get better. Please let it get better. Two hundred fifty five miles southeast on the one hundred thirteen foot time bandit. Trip. And this weather sucks. I just want to. I just want to go home. You know, my guys want to go home. It's frustrating when you can't move forward and you're not making money. Stuck at dock with engine repairs for the past ten days. Captain Jake Anderson's king season is still on hold. We got another thirty or forty thousand. I think it's hard on everybody. Everybody's getting fed up, you know, it's time to go fishing. That's my favorite one. I was on my phone doing business and he crawls up to get my attention. Doesn't even seem like I really have a son and a family anymore. I've been gone so long. The delay in port not only costs thousands of dollars a day, it also takes a toll on the boat's morale. People think we like being cold and we like being tired and we like being hungry. We're just normal people. We don't like any of that stuff. We just like to be home with our families and we can't. It's the hardest thing about this job is you're away from your family. The fuel pressure gauges, they all work. In the engine room. Just can't get it to see the work right. I don't know 
what else to do. Nothing but bad news. I just put that thing back together. We gotta have somebody come and look at it, or we're gonna replace it. Get it! That separator is not separating the water from the fuel. It ain't doing its job, you know? And then when we poured water in the it should have just been, it should immediately separate that water from that fuel. And it's just going like this, dude. Drip, drip, drip. No. Oh, me. We don't have a working centrifuge. The centrifuge is a crucial piece that keeps water from contaminating the fuel. The engines will die and we will Jake has a ton on this playground. He's freaking out. I don't blame him. I'd be freaking out too. I'm not going out on this boat without my paper. Here. Set up here just isn't working properly. And that's not good because the fuel uh, filters can get clogged up. And then before you know it, our generators and our mains can just shut down. A critical part that prevents water from contaminating the fuel has failed. We might as well just get jobs working at the dock. Because that's what we're doing. Now, with his remaining king crab season on the line, Jake must find a solution. I've fished for 11 days. I've been here for two months. Or risk losing everything he's worked for. I got, a, I got a plan for the fuel. We're just gonna buy every filter that is in Dutch Harbor, and we're just gonna change them out all the time. You need to go get a case of filters. Change them every three hours. Wash the gauges, if it drops at all, yeah. we change them. The fuel separator is now being replaced by Cases and cases upon cases of fuel filters. It's gonna cost a lot of money, but it's the price you pay to stay alive. We got some extra fuel filters here. Go ahead and rip them off. Coming up. All right, you want, I can screw it in if you want. Oh, it's dangerous. That was a rough go. We're on our way again. Thank the good Lord. Hallelujah. Get excited over these numbers. It's been 18 days, and this could just end up being a bunch of blanks. There's riders. That's got to be more than 30. 60, 60. 60, 60. Is Ollie down there? Who's that new guy with the with the nice pants on? For the first time in 30 and years, never again, huh? veteran engineer Ollie Helgevold heads out on deck. I think Ollie's got to be about 64. Oh, holy! 
Holy f dude. Holy, you gotta stay out here, you're good luck. Sixty-six, six-six. All right. Oh. Hopefully this keeps up. We'll have all all the crap we need in our gear. That would be awesome. Oh yeah. It could be a short trip. Could be a day. I'm on my game. I'm ready to get this crab on and get the f home. I miss my wife. I miss my son, Aiden. I missed his first steps. You know, and that's the life of a fisherman. It's just, you know, you can make all the money in the, you want in the world, but it, you can never replace that time to, to my son. You never get it back. Two hundred ten miles north of Dutch Harbor, on the one hundred ten foot Brenna A. Now it's red. Runners in a tunnel. Tunnel runners. No cut. Cut and blew out on the way up. First pot, cotton is broken. You gotta be kidding me. It's the only thing that's holding them in there is the bait, because the hole's wide open on the side of the pot. Nothing you can really do about it except try and sew it up. To protect the species, Alaska Fish and Game requires a biodegradable line or cotton on each crab pot. If a pot is lost, the line dissolves after 30 days, allowing the trapped crab to escape. You gotta start checking every pot now. Cotton. What's the deal here, Zender? You weren't getting checked, probably. I don't know. If the yeah. cottons aren't checked by the railman as the pots are set, a viable crab can escape, costing both time and money. 32! 32! So that sucks. Costing us crab. Oh, cotton. Are you kidding me? Another one? What the? Obviously, we were double checking all the pots. Stack none. It's the rail guy's responsibility to look at the bio. Whoever was on the rail for this string was not checking them. And now we're paying for it. Is this even possible? You got to go offload tomorrow. And the fact of the matter is, if there's still some crab we left on the bottom. The crab we could have put on the boat right now. Who the was on the rail for this string? Brit. That's a uh, wound that continues to bleed. This past week, we're having issues with the gear. Are you going to do anything about it? I mean, well, you... when I was pulling them up before, I'm like, oh, don't worry about it. So... Who the f said that? Me? No. Britt hasn't maintained gear to the captain's standards. Honestly, man, it's a bunch of Yeah, little guy. And his attitude? It's been even worse. Hey, Britt, if you want to talk just know it comes back to me. And if you piss me off enough, I'm going to call you out on it. I'm going to break your balls and send you home crying, looking like a little so, Britt, you were on the rail for this string. How many times can I tell you? Check every pot. We were supposed to be fixing everything. Ah, uh, well, that's a debate. You know, why aren't we getting these numbers? Is it because it's been so long enough? That can be just as big of an hard as uh, a bad cotton. Uh, I didn't f up the cotton. It's because you're hauling them too early. What? You gotta be responsible for your actions. There's consequences to all these blank pots. Had seven pots so far today. Make that number eight. 
What the f Over the next 12 hours. 31 pots. 5,000 pounds of crab we missed. The damage adds up. A whole string without cottons. And the captain's patience runs out. You know, pretty much a $15,000 mistake. So, yeah, I'm bitter. We gotta go down and offload. I gotta get these crab off the boat. Frustrating as hell. The numbers are, you know, two thirds to half of what should be. Still 20,000 pounds short and out of time. Brent, can come up here and take a wheel watch real quick. Yep. The Brenna A shuts down and heads to port. So let's have a seat, boys. While Britt takes first wheel watch. The gust issues, and uh, I don't know if there's a way to resolve them. The captain meets with the rest of the crew. That was money out of our pockets, you know? The answer is clear to me. Britt's got to go. My concern is minus one guy, your job gets twice as hard. One in deck. Uh, we'll be all right. But you guys are all four unanimously saying we would be better without him. Aye. Aye. Down to you. Trim to fat. Get on with the program, man. Britain, need to come into the galley. What's up? Well, kind of the position I'm in is uh, you haven't really been getting along. It's just not seeming to work, you know? I mean, where I'm at in all this is Britt doesn't fit in with the rest of everybody on a professional or personal level. But most importantly, I was pissed about the bios. Couldn't even keep crab in the pots, you know? And I can't have that on my boat. Anybody have any opinions? Well, it's just that. I mean, you're not making it very easy to work with on mm. deck. You know, it's simple things like holding on the pot when they're landing it, and it's just things like that. And it just keeps happening and happening and happening. I, I was pretty happy with things that like breaking airs up until this last trip. It's just like the deck feels like it's more of a personal pack. But see here, Britt, the deck's getting better, and things for you have been getting worse and worse. The tension is infectious. I've talked to everybody. Everybody here feels we'd be better with somebody else. And I'm sorry that it's not working out, but I'm going to have to send you home. OK. You want to add, add, add to this next trip or right now? Today. Okay. Yeah. I know. So I've got you a flight that's leaving here. I just wish that someone had said something, you know, last trip, for example, at the end of last trip or before this trip, you know. Um, yeah, I hate to cut this short, but they are going to have a plane here for you shortly. OK. So. Ugh. Would be nice to have a good day. I think it went just about as expected. One thing that my dad always told me was that the way he dealt with people was that when their problems became his problems, he fixed them. And they might not like how he fixes them, but they're getting fixed. A 200 mile wide Arctic hurricane barrels directly over the fishing grounds. We just got into a hell of a squall here. I don't have the horsepower. I don't have the, the rail height. This is not a hurricane fishing boat. On the 108 foot Cape Caution. Yeah, right here. We have the worst weather we've seen this entire season. China sent for a southwest wind that's about 40 knots. Always trying to think ahead. Set them so when we pick them later with the wind, we're not 
at the weather. Fighting through the relentless storm. They're trying to protect us. Captain Wild Bill Bukrowski lines up his next string. with a set of the rough weather really exposes our greenness and crew out here. Just kind of lobbed the bag over the side and sent it throwing it away from the boat. The powerful current pushed the buoy set up under the hull. I think I got it blown out. Now, the captain's problem is whether or not his lines made it past the stern. Ronnie didn't throw him out far enough, and this weather pushed him back on our boat. If you run one over, you could, uh, worst case scenario, is you break the shaft and lose the prop. Hey, Nick, can you come up and take a look off the stern and see if I'm dragging anything with? If you're wrapped, it'll kill the engine. You know, we, we can lose the boat. No, you're clear of the police setups back there. Is it? Yeah, it's still, yeah. We're good. We're lucky. I mean, we can't afford to get anything in the wheel. Us going to town on one engine right now would be totally disastrous. Uh, all right, let's, uh, yeah, go ahead, continue. Cape Caution. We're a long way from home, and we're talking 50 knot winds, and I can't maintain steering with one engine on this boat. Is it on the wheel or is it on this line? No, it's down there. So they're both going down? Yeah. So when we said it was clear, we weren't clear. Oh, I'm pretty sure it's clear. I don't know. We have a pot tied up on the rudder. Nick said we were clear. We weren't clear, so we caught a set of second ones. So a second one wrapped up on the first one. Launching a string in a storm, the boat ran over a buoy setup, and a propeller snagged a pot. When the second pot was launched, it caught hold of the first one. Now, dragging 2,000-pound anchors, and 300 yards of line. Captain and crew are in a bind. If this stuff comes loose and all of a sudden there's a, a big couple big loops and it gets wrapped up in the wheel, we could be right in the middle of a 40, 50 knot blow. And I'm putting the boat at risk, along with the crew, to stay out with We got pots stuck in our wheel. It's really, really bad. 
Pull up all the slack you can. Tightening the lines minimizes the chance of any more snags. As long as I put it in forward and go, that will just hang. But if I have to maneuver and you put it in reverse and it wraps around the shaft, it can, it can just bind us up and just shut us down. I'm not gonna go anywhere. Yeah, you're secure back here. All right, you know what? The forecast is nothing but 40s and 50s for the next five days. Yeah. I'm, I can't risk this. Yeah, it's understandable. We're going in, so secure the deck. We're really fortunate right now that we even have power to the starboard engine. We're gonna uh, take what we have and go to town. <laughs> Ten years ago, I would have wouldn't have batted an eye. I would have tied the best I could have, but times are changing. This isn't the way I want to go. I've never had to come in for line in a wheel, but first for everything, you know. After dragging 900 feet of line back to town, as soon as he gets that line cut out of the wheel, we're gonna throw lines and get out of here. Captain Wild Bill prepares to head back out, wrap things up. Divers are done, line is out. We are ready to rock and roll. Let's go, let's throw the lines, let's get out of here and get this over with. We don't have much to catch. Okay, I'll go fire them. After taking control of the boat for their Opelio season. I don't know why. Still here. Just because there's old man crab here back in the day doesn't necessarily mean that there's still crab here. The young skipper's promising start has hit the wall. We're on the dollar signs right now. We pulled four blanks, but here in the next pot, I was floating over the top of this and it did it again. The whole screen lit up for about eight fathoms worth of just red. And it was still reading the bottom. Nice. That's the line for the pot, and it's been sitting in this huge ball of something. Oh my god. Oh my god, these are stuff. Are you me? Dude, that guy, look Holy. at this. I'm betting that's close to 550. Like, Woo! Woo! That's so much crap. That's unreal. <laughs> oh. 680. Right on. <laughs> wow. That's the biggest part of the season. You're going to the mirror right there. It's the biggest. What else was that? The bottom is right here. This is not the bottom. <laughs> this is the bottom. You can see right here where the bottom ended. There's not big elevation changes here. This is life of some sort. And if it's crab. <laughs> oh my gosh. Technically, you're not supposed to be able to see crab with the, crab with the sounder, but. <laughs> this has got pull up a 10 freaking, hours on it. Yeah, a pot with 10 hours and it's got 600 crab on it. Something's happening down there. <laughs> yeah, something's happening. <laughs> Hey, Willie, you know how they say you can't see crab on a sounder? There's six fathoms of something as soon as we got on that big pot. <laughs> like, literally six fathoms of something. You got, yeah, come up here and look at this. You won't believe it. Look at this. We're in 65 fathoms. This is what we're actually in. This is the bottom right here. Yeah. Is that not wild? There's that much down there. That doesn't look like Pollock either. No, that's not Pollock. Usually you'd see the round edges. For sure, that's not Pollock. And you'd see a little black line in between. I've fished enough Pollock. No, that's not Pollock. <laughs> no, no, that's not Pollock. <laughs> dude, that but look, all of a sudden it stops. That's a meat pile, dude. That could be a massive biomass just sitting could there. Could be a, a big pile of crab. Hopefully I've never crab. seen crab show up like that on a sounder, though. It's, I've heard it's possible. Back in the day, guys could see mounds of crab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? All right. Good. All right. Thank you. Sweet. Dude, we might have something huge going on here. 
Crab move across the ocean floor in large schools, but according to fishing lore, whether for protection, reproduction, or to feed on a large food source, crab begin to swarm into a rising mountain of shells and legs known as a crab ball, the mother load of mother loads. All right, hey, we're gonna whip this around and we're gonna set a very unorthodox like I'm gonna set very slow, we're gonna set a lot of pots in a little area. So be ready. It's a pretty risky move. We don't know how much crab's actually down there. The typical set positions pots every quarter mile. To hit the center of the crab ball, Josh will sit idle and set in a tight circle, barely a boat length apart. I'm really hoping they come up stuffful, big, beautiful, chili on crab. As my dad would say, we're on the herd. Set pots every 100 feet, so pots have been going over really fast. <laughs> Now, this is the tightest I've ever seen gear set. <laughs> well, here. Here's one pot right here, right? That's the one we just set. The next one's not even a boat length away. The one behind that's not even a boat length behind that. If one of these misses, they're all going to miss because <laughs> they're all within two football fields of each other. Knock on wood. Let's see if I got that Harris lock. Three hundred ninety miles northwest of Dutch Harbor. All right, I think I can make it through this. On the Cornelia Marie. <laughs> pot, 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 pot. Oh my god, dude, this is madness! I tell you, this is as tight as you can set gear. Captain Josh Harris has bet all his gear in a tight area. I saw this weird anomaly down the center. Decide, hey, let's just plop off 30 pots into a giant ball. <laughs> Based on a fable known as a crap ball. My dad did some pretty epic I don't think he like this. Hopefully they're not all tangled up and hopefully there's a bunch of crab in them. It's starting to get thicker. Say a little prayer. Oh! Well, not what we're hoping for. <laughs> <laughs> not even close. <laughs> I hope this is not a trend. Oh, done. Sucks if you catch me, crap. 55. Having that one. There's more crab. <laughs> getting better. <laughs> this takes a second to warm up. We're getting warmer. <laughs> we just went from 55 to uh, like 200 and one pot, like one boat length. Yeah, baby. Little friends are coming back. Starting to get some action right there. That's a big pot, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the numbers are getting better. So, I'm happy. I'm happy. My beat, my word. 480. All right. 480 on that one. This one's going to be even bigger. This is insane. All right. There is a lot of little crab right here. What a pile. <laughs> My money ball. <laughs> My money ball's paying out. Big pot! 75 miles northwest. On the Brenna A. Well, 
Spot just break off? Mother. Are you kidding me? The spot just broke off. Sucker. Uh, yep, there's a thousand bucks. When a wave comes and lifts the boat up and the block's pulling full speed, there's a lot of force on that line. If that line has any frays or fractures or anything like that, they can go go missing in a hurry. The lost pots and the $700 of crab inside comes out of the boat's profits. Britt and Tony, you need to check every line when you're setting it. You need to be looking at the line as it runs through the block. See if you see any frays or anything like that. Yeah, Roger. Making sure both pots and lines can fish is the responsibility of deckhands Tony Bundy and Britt Jandry. And don't set anything if it's not right. Right. It happens, man, you know? It's hard to look at every inch of 100 fathoms, you know what I mean? Better not be losing any more. Another pot. You gotta be kidding me. The second line snaps, dropping another two thousand dollars into the Bering Sea. I got control back here. Yeah. This should have never went out. A good day's, you know, a good chunk of a day's worth of fishing is that dollar value in pots. If they don't take care of the pots, there's no point in setting them. What's the point of setting a pot if it, you know, it's not going to catch crap? What's what's the point? You know? I'm not doing this for fun. You gotta have a talk with them. Tony, Britt, come here. Britt, neither one of you guys saw that go through the block. It's pretty much trash. You guys got to start paying attention to the year. Is that like? Those are terrible. But are you going to do anything about it? I mean, well, you... when I was pulling them up before, but they don't worry about it. So... Who the f said that? Me? No. Hey, so you're just going to let it happen? Well, people blow me up all the time. So... so the issue we got here is it's never Tony's fault. It's never Britt's fault. It's never anyone's fault. But we're having issues with the gear. Nobody ever takes accountability for any of this. Is what that is, and it's it's really just embarrassing. Do your job. If you can't do your job, then we have an issue. There's crab in that pot. That's really good. First year captain Sean Dwyer is working overtime on big numbers. This is on 24 hours, so. One, one, eight. So one eighteen in that one. How long does that be in the water? Twenty six hours. That's a killer crowd, man. Yeah. You're right. One hundred eighteen in twenty four hours is awesome. I'm going for two crab an hour, and that was almost five. This might be half baked, but it seemed like the ones that had herring in them, we've been getting them for crap. They don't like those like, sardines? Yeah. When you think about it, it's like animals are creatures that have, they like what's around them, what's indigenous, and maybe they find herring here. It's local, it's, it's yeah. American. You could be 100% right with that because we're using these imported sardines from Morocco. Captains use different types of baits to attract crab. This school seems partial to herring. So maybe we just switch over the herring? Yeah. That's awesome, dude. Good eye. That's it, Mike. Good call. Never underestimate a greenhorn. That's the moral of that little story right there. So switch all of these bait bags over to herring. If herring is the ticket, then that's what we'll go with. We're going to experiment with it. Yeah, it looks like 
herring's fishing a lot better than the sardines, so we're gonna change our bait game from here on out. They don't like what they're eating. They're not gonna get in the pot. Simple. Now that we know the whole herring thing, um, I should change, change this quite a bit. That's an expensive mistake to make. No. What are we doing here? Is this a... I'm just plotting on how I'm going to knock out Brett, make it look like an accident. It sounds like an expensive mistake to make. We should have been using herring the whole time. Really? Really? For Brett to come at me like that, like it's my fault, like I knew better, that or that little needs to say that to my face if he wants to make a difference. He's bad on deck. He likes drama, and he tries to spread cancer on deck to try to get everybody against me down there. Do that, dude. One more snide comment, and he's going down. Honestly, I have too much Whatever. That little guy. Burn me like that. Okay, well, we're gonna take a break. Hey, Brett, if you want to talk, just know it comes back to me. And if you piss me off enough, I'm gonna call you out on it. I'm gonna break your balls, send you home crying, looking like a little. What? What did I say? Uh, what did I say? Oh yeah. Like what? You're like, well, that's an expensive mistake to I make. I said that would be an expensive mistake. Everybody knows what you said. If you want to jab back and forth, just know that I don't lose. Uh, I guess you're, you're taking it with jabs, but I'm not being, am I being hateful or trying to talk about anybody? So I don't understand why the talking line is. No, no, no. It, it, you're totally talking. Mm -hmm. I mean, it makes you look like a, but that's besides the point. Just be careful. I'm giving you this kind of as a courtesy. If you want to bring up about, you know, any of that where it tries to make me look like I'm an idiot or incompetent, and if you piss me off, I will react. And then it's game on. Every year something happens that I never thought of. It's too soon to feel happy, proud, sad, glad. I won't be relieved until I get to Seattle. That's when the season ends for me. It's the final. Oh, God. I don't understand why it hurts so much right here. What's wrong, sir? Nothing. We're doing your interview. I'm not dying, so just let that go. I'm gonna let my family see that. <sighs> Take you want me to see if the clinic's open? Oh my god. Just like a knot. Oh. Sick. Honestly, if you have a chest. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know what it is. If the chest and left arm isn't good. I know, I know that. I'm saying left arm could just be a cramp. It could be bad sleep. It's right here. It's like a muscle thing. Right here. All the way up to here. Here, here, here. It's just a... Oh my God. Sick, I think you should go to the clinic. Feel better. 
brother's worsening condition. Edgar Hansen races to shore to arrange immediate medical attention. It's most likely a heart attack, but as of right now, we don't know. Edgar and Nick follow the EMTs as they transport Sig to the airport. You feel better, man. I'll take care of you. Okie doke. Now we'll just disconnect her from this cord. And they're going to take you down on each. So, what we're going to do is get you on our monitor, bring you down to the cath lab, and get you ready for this heart catheterization. All right? A specialized test will determine if Sig has had a heart attack. Captain Sig's wife, Yuna, and daughters, Nina and Mandy, arrive from the lower 48 states. Stay for that last trip. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Get you here faster. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, if I interrupt. Yeah, absolutely. So everybody's flown in. Oh, yeah. I've got all the beauties in here. It sounds like it. I just wanted to go over what we found. So um, we did a what's called a ventriculogram, where we put a whole bunch of contrast and look at his heart function. Um, this whole wall's not working, and this one's not working called a stress-induced heart failure, where a major stressful event or more stress than usual can cause heart failure. Troponin is how we measure heart attacks. And the way we get troponin in the blood is the cells die and they release their contents into the blood. So a little heart attack would be a troponin of 0.5 or 1. Um, his was 80. Yeah. Big big bump in your opponent. So you had a lot of heart damage. It could have killed you. You had the Widowmaker. You think so? Mm-hmm. With a troponin of 80, it. it was a hit to the heart. This was a big one. This could have killed you. You're lucky. Yeah, it's been a couple days since we got the news. Uh, we're waiting for him to, uh, to be able to get let out so we can get everyone home. Um, it was pretty devastating hearing it getting the call, you never know when you're going to get that kind of call. It was a shocker. I didn't, well, you think about stuff like that could happen, but you don't think it's going to happen to you or somebody close to you, so it was awful. You never know the last time you're going to see your parents either. So being able to get that last trip and being able to see what my dad does and having him teach me uh, the ropes out there means a lot. I'm just more than thankful that he's still here, he's still alive. Uh, what he went through, went through those people pass away, so. Days aren't gonna be the same ever again for him. Hello, girls. <laughs> uh, 
Doctor said I was lucky because most people don't even get a chance to get to the hospital. It could have been a big, big one. It was a big one. And it's like, I know I have everything to live for. I mean, we've got anything a guy could want. Sure makes you think how precious life is, how fast it is. I mean, it's like that. You know, pretty lucky guy. Just outside of St. Paul Harbor, on the Northwestern. I chose not to fish out there in 24-foot seas. It's so late in the game, I just don't want anybody to get hurt, and I'm beating the boat up. Heavy seas and 40-knot winds have forced Captain Sig Hansen to an early offload. You've got all the whitewater breakers coming up on that jetty. So you got to surf your way in and then turn 90 degrees to get into that place. But maneuvering into the harbor is a different story. If Sig's timing is off just slightly and a wave catches the broadside, the Northwestern and her crew will be smashed across the treacherous jetty. And that risk is not worth it. The younger Sig wouldn't think twice, but I'm too old for that. It's time for plan B. <sighs> Once again, Mother Nature is in control, not me. You can't beat the weather. We can anchor on the other side of the island. Instead of battling the waves to enter the harbor. I don't want to die out here. <laughs> Captain Sig will drop anchor and wait for calmer seas. All right, you're out. So when we anchor up, it's tough because you've got swell coming one way and wind going the other. So even though your boat's being held back by the wind, you still got that swell rocking and rolling. Yep. Give it a kick. It'll take probably half a day for this to mellow out, if not more. So just because you're sitting on anchor doesn't mean you're sitting pretty. And you got a big ground swell, surge. Well, we got to keep an eye on things here. The anchor grabs a hold of the bottom. But the extreme weather puts maximum stress on the old equipment. I think it'd be all right. She's holding, but we do have this swell coming in. Oh. On the Northwestern. Oh. It's busted. It's lost it. No. The cable holding the boat's 1,500 pound anchor Cable snapped. Is broken. This sucks. You got the wind holding us back, and then a big swell came in. It was just enough to part the cable. We'll be jogging tonight. Without an anchor, both boats and crew <sighs> are vulnerable to the wrath of the Bering Sea. That was a big one. All the air is pow! Oh. Knew it was gone. So now our anchor is on the bottom. I'm trying to see if I can get that thing back. You guys out there? Come up for a sec. Let's get a game plan here. Gotta find a way to retrieve the anchor. 
The cable snapped between the boat and the two buoys, which marked the severed anchor cable's location. The cable is on those bags. I think if you can uh, get a lasso around those surge bags, if I bring it up to the side of those surge bags, and then you just loop it, just put a nylon loop, boom. Then you can take that nylon, and you run it, run it around, and you pull them both up. They're both going to wind up. See what I mean? Huh? Allow me to translate. To retrieve the anchor, they need to reconnect the two pieces of broken cable with a nylon line, and then Hope it holds as they winch the 5,300 pounds of cable, chain, and anchor back aboard the boat. I mean, do you think that's doable? Easier said than done. Let's try it. Yeah. Reel it up. Ah, nice, big, big lasso. Come on, Carl, do it. Uh, Get it, Carl. Don't jump. You got one. There we go. Hey! Quickly! Uh. Go, go, go. Watch out. Carl, the flag's off a little. You got it. You going to tie it on the end? Nicely done. With the two ends of the cable connected by a three quarter inch nylon line, it's now up to Sig to maneuver the boat to haul up the 5,000 pounds of steel. Okay, go easy. I need to just keep slack. My job is to stay ahead of it so that we lift the cable straight up if I can. We don't want any strain on it now because you'll just snap that line. That line is solely there to lift up that cable. Lift it up. Okay, bring it up, man. Get that cable up on it. Try to overlap it so you get a bite. If we can get a wrap on that drum, then we've got it. That can't coming off that drum. Oh, yeah, we got it. That's ours. We own it. Not bad. We'll get our anchor back. Hey, <laughs> that was slick. I'm afraid to ask what's next. the 107-foot Cape Caution. But we're officially fishing right now, in my, the way I look at it. For some reason, I had that gut feeling, thinking El Nino, warmer temperatures, if the crab are a little deeper, a little cooler water. What are, where I'm leaving the pots should have some crab when I get back. Captain Wild Bill Bukrowski is setting back on a new honey hole. Crab are here to harvest. I'm going to fine tune this, end up with a good pick. Got some crab to set on, and that's really good. Get it going. Going over. Hey, Hunter! Come on, throw. There's only 16. We're going to go any minute. I'm pressing Bill right now, dude. You all right with that? Yeah. I believe. Uh, looks like Zach's going to put 100 throwing shots. To get his chance at the wheelhouse, engineer Zach Larson auditions 23-year-old Greenhorn Hunter Cooper to replace him at the rail. I talked to Zach, and I said, we need some better help on deck for you to get up to the wheelhouse, because I, with only two really experienced guys, I can't pull you off. There's a reason for him to be motivated. Yeah, go. Let's go, here we go! 
we have a crabber in the making. The more Hunter can do gives me more of an opportunity to go up in the wheelhouse. You know, I won't feel bad about leaving Nick on deck. You know, it's good to see Zach stepping up and being a leader. The better they get, the quicker he might get here. You know, he gets it. It's a good thing for the Cape costume. If it all works out like I hope, we're getting lined up on a pick. Find the window to get Zach up here. We're gonna let him drive. It's a resolution to our problem. Yeah, that's the last one. Oh. I might have just broke my finger. It's got it snagged up on something, and it popped really bad. You okay? I don't know. Oh. One more loop. Hey. Hey, take the hey. Take your off. What do you do? Oh. Let me see your hand. Where's the hurt right here? Yeah. Can you make a fist? Oh. Oh. That doesn't feel good. I want you to go inside. And you need to go directly up to Bill. It doesn't feel right. It feels Bill, what'd you do? On that last one, I was in a hurry trying to open the door. Uh, Snag this finger in there. Get ripped to the side. Got no grip and I can't. Every time I try to open and close it, it just pops. Hey, what? Uh, you didn't tear it because you're moving it. If you tear it, it won't move. Say so you sprained it, we'll get you some ibuprofen. Obviously, if you can't use it, you can't use it. So we'll just keep keep on keeping on and see what happens. But... I'll try to work. With well, it, I'm not trying to be. A no, I know, I know, I know. I'm not worried about that. I'm just, I didn't think you were. I don't think you are. So we just take a break and then we'll see what happens. Then. Uh, sorry. Thank you. So, I guess this, the trick now is to, he's just treated as such, you know, he's, he's banged up. So, what do we got? Who's gonna, help, who's gonna take Zach's place? Zach's plan to sit in the captain's chair hits a roadblock. Jammed it, tried to caught in something. I don't really know. Can hardly make a fist. Now, down to a four-man deck. I guess that takes Hunter out of the rotation. Getting behind the wheel, we'll have to wait. Zach had high regards for the guy, you know? But he can't do it. Well, one step forward, two steps backwards for getting Zach upstairs. It's like a new day. Got a few pots to move. It's 13 cod pots. So what do you think I'm gonna do? I'm going to haul gear, rearrange it. <sighs> this is hard. You know, I keep talking about getting Zach up here. And in this game, you never have enough gear running. You never have, have enough crab on the boat. And it's, I'm like, I got to keep going, keep going. I, I can't take the time. I can't take I have to. Hey, you want to come up here a minute, man? Come If that face got any longer, I'd put a saddle on him right now, you know? He looks like a... Horse face. You're gonna stack the cut pods and I'm gonna, since Hunter's hurt, I'm gonna throw the hook. So I'm gonna walk out and you're gonna be up here. Okay. So I'm gonna need a bummer's pair of gloves. I think I got everything else. Yeah. After six years working on deck. I worked long and hard to get it up off that deck. I hope you know that. Yeah. The skipper finally gives his son a break. Whoa, we got the captain coming out on deck. Get the f*** off the rail. Ooh, we have Bill. That's Bill. 
Sun's going down. Zach's in the wheelhouse. Captain Bill's throwing hook. Pretty crazy day. It's a pretty cool sacrifice my dad's making, putting on some rain gear and going back on deck, which my dad's never, never on deck. Got one more in the water, guys. One more. Hey, you're making it too easy on Bill. You want a long one? Long one coming up. At the rail, Bill is 12 for 12. Well, I guess I've been driving too good. Bags have been way too close to the boat. So Zach moves the goalposts to test his father's 58-year-old arm. Oh, a little room to spare on that one. Nice throw. I wish I could have gone like 10 more feet, too. Hey, that was fun. Not one bit. Good job, guys. Thanks a lot for letting me come up here. Appreciate it. You know, it's fun working with Bill down here. He should come down more often. And I'll drive. Seas are really stacked up. Right now, the tide's running to the west, and we have a, a big northwest wind, which is a pretty combination. It's crazy. This came out of nowhere. It's uh, not a lot of fun right now. On the 108-foot Cape Caution. The best of all my strings were in this area right here, and it's a pretty good-sized little spot. I'm going to set a little bit south, and I'm going to go a little deeper. And if they're working towards the deep, we should run right into them. Captain Wild Bill Bukrowski has only 20,000 pounds of Ophelio crab left to catch. All righty, let's get ready. Before he makes the switch to Veridite. Hopefully through these pots I have the remaining crab we need to meet our quota. All right, now we're just racing his time. Meet our opening quota, meet our offload time. I was gonna do a little training exercise, but I'm getting trained myself on these. It's kind of kind of lumpy from a weird direction, and anybody can haul crab pots on a lake. Throw a little lump in there, and things change. I want to get Zach in the wheelhouse. I really do. He's got a lot to learn in this one. This season. All right. Hey, we got two strings here. What I was thinking is maybe have you two guys run the gear and snag a string of piece. Nope. Wild Bill had hoped to motivate his son to take more initiative. Oh, look at all that excitement. But Zach hasn't always taken the bait. And the most enthusiastic thing he can say or do is go. One is make sure Zach has the knowledge to follow behind me. So far, I'm a little disappointed in his Zach's motivation to learn how to fish. He's got an opportunity that such a small number of people in the world will ever have. And is he going to watch it go by? Look out, look out. The problem is you have to take control when you're in this position. There's a little potential for banging people up in this tonight. Probably better that I just do it myself. Back there. This is crazy. We got some crazy big swells coming through here right now. Yeah. 
A rogue wave crashed over the starboard wall and nearly crushed 22-year-old Greenhorn Hunter Cooper with an 800-pound pot. Watch the line, watch the line! Zach's quick reaction prevented a fellow crew member from getting caught in the bite and dragged overboard. That was real close. Hey, Zach. Yeah. Good reaction. Up there. Yeah, good reaction. Oh. Zach did a great job. He's gotten to be a, a damn good deckhand. But it's a little different going from there to here. There's so much that is right here for the asking for Zach. You know, you want to back your own. You want to. You want to advance your your family, but the jury's still out. Yeah, I can't believe it. We're down on the wire for the OP season 2016. On the 108-foot Cape Caution. On my delivery time set, my delivery date set. It's a little bit nerve-wracking. We need to see some numbers today. That's the whole thing. I'm trying to get to town, trying to get our quota trying to make this offload time. We don't have time. On the verge of filling his Opelio quota, Captain Wild Bill Bukrowski is betting on this string to put him over the top. All yours. Healthy. Bing. I've been just fighting the clock in numbers and pots. Two two zero. It's a time and numbers game. Oh yeah! Woo! If we can keep this up, we're gonna make it. This is what we need right here. Yeah, we're almost done with the season here. As long as there's no major surprises today, it's over. Whoa, whoa, whoa! We got a problem here. Something wrong with oh, the launcher. The launcher just shifted real funny. Check that first ram. Pin is out. <sighs> Couldn't have the worst time. Two pins connect the hydraulic arms to the launcher. When you shake the pot, after a while, it, it uh, things come loose. Without them, the hydraulics can't power the launcher, and the boats can't fish. All around, not good. Nick jumped right in, and I mean, he had the tools coming out. He had the rack off, and kind of prompted everybody to give him a hand. Deck boss Nick McGloshan takes control of the fix. He's got a deeper, like, drive embedded into him. Nick's more old school than Zach. Bill's son, Zach, assumes a supervisory posture. Zach may stand there and say he wants to be captain, but is he just kind of let this thing go by because he knows I'm not going to just walk away and give it to him? You had fix. Almost done. Ah! He just couldn't come at a worse time. Hopefully this quick fix is gonna work for us. I don't know, he's coming out. I hope that'd be great if we're uh, if we're there. How are we looking guys? Hopefully this thing lasts another four hours. Good to go? All right. On the 113 foot time bandit. Uh, that's a sad state of affairs. We got a delivery day coming up, and uh, we're way behind the gun. So far, I've not seen the crab. Seven, zero. Already halfway through the Opelio season. Sucks. Captain Jonathan Hillstrand 
is a far cry away from catching his million dollars of grab. So you want to be a crapper, Smith? Stacker. Trying to find a home for these pots and get them in the water. I think the east side gully is going to be looking pretty good for us. With only 80,000 pounds on board and working on a 70 crab average, Jonathan packs it in to find more productive grounds. Just need to catch some damn crab. <laughs> Just try not to get nobody hurt. Try to get him some crab. Try to get him home real quick as I can. And I got one of them having a baby. Well, he's not actually having a baby. His wife is. <laughs> on deck. I got to get home quick. Got to make some money. Got to pay for diapers and all that bull 25-year-old crewman Kyle Dyer awaits a delivery date of his own. Every last crab count. Every crab is a diaper for Kyle and his wife to change. The birth of his first child. I'm responsible for these guys' lives, and there's a lot of family on this boat. So a lot of responsibility when they look up at me. I see from all of, you know, Freddie's two newborns, and blind dog's baby not yet to be. I'm like the mama possum with the babies on their back. I'm not gonna let any of my babies fall off my back. Hey. How did the uh, ultrasound go? Because of potential health complications, the baby's due date is being moved up. Well, what is going on? Tell me. The baby's not growing right, and so they need to get the baby out. That sucks. I don't want to see you miss that. I'll try my best to get you home. So I just got to get this gear back in the water as fast as I can and get my crab. Thank you, John. Basically, just don't have babies when you're out here opelio fishing. We're going to run this over about a half a mile, so about four minutes. With a million dollar opelio season weighing on his mind. I'm trying to find a home for these pots, get them in the water, be the place to be over here. Captain Jonathan Hillstrand counts on new grounds to break his losing streak. Trying to load this boat, cannery deadline. Then we got a guy that's having having a baby, and he's having his wife's having complications. He needs to come out early. I have a real nightmare where a guy has to go home. The weather's definitely come up, making it a, more of a bitch. I got to load this boat because Blind Dog's wife wants him home for the delivery of the baby. Under pressure to deliver his crab and get deckhand Kyle Dyerly to the maternity board. I'm on a mission. Captain Jonathan Hillstrand launched a desperate Hail Mary set on new grounds. It's real crucial we're going against the green. I mean, everybody else is over there. This could be the wrong thing to do, but we'll find out. With 58,000 pounds left to catch. OK, guys. A young deckhand's hopes and a veteran skipper's offload are both riding on this string. I love you. We care about you, so we need crab in these pots. Let's go. Let's go. You got pots to the wall, baby. Ah! We're checking our first pot here, and this will tell us a lot. Turn it burning, baby. Turn it burning. Turn it burning. Dude, oh yeah. A lot of stress on this one. It's going to calm my nerves down. And here we go. Hot number one. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Not looking. Tell me when it comes up. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was intense. That's intense. 
there. Oh, 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 Quick as you humanly possibly can dump it back, dump it back. We have a chance now. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Just made his day. All he wants is these tanks full. But I can't stop. I love you, man. Keeping a brutal pace, the Time Bandit boys battle punishing winds in heavy seas. Yeah, baby. To bring the Opelio Crab bounty aboard. 195. Yeah! See how much room is in that tank. See no one do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we almost got her done. Go more pots, guys. The knots in. I'm so happy for you, Kyle. Your wife's gonna cry when she finds out. Oh! Sliding into Dutch Harbor here. We got the Red King Crab on board for 2015. On board the Cape Caution. We're gonna be riding 100,000 pounds on the boat. You know what? It is what it is. It's a great season. I gotta tie the boat up. Captain Wild Bill Wakrowski heads in to offload his red crab after a fast season. Falling in the Dutch. It's stuff to the max. I'm trying to set a new record for the Cape Caution. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that goes up. <laughs> The hustle. <laughs> oh my <laughs> green horn. <laughs> what? <laughs> Can't even tie up a <laughs> boat. Over the last week and a half, <laughs> new deckhand Gerard Seacrest has not been performing well on deck. Tell us what you can and can't do. This will get us a big <laughs> fine. Jared was hired by Bill's son, Zach, and he's been letting him down. Well, you shouldn't have to make somebody take a handicap test There's just not a lot of trust going on with Jared on the boat. None of the guys out here trust him. They can give on his numbers. Hey, everything's boiling down to Jared. All the problems are down to Jared now. That's a pretty simple way to do everything, isn't it? Nobody else taking any responsibility for what's happening. It's all his fault. Oh, man, I just want to retire from the I really do. Hello? Uh-huh. Really? <laughs> You're kidding me. I asked them that before the season. Two. You're serious. Who the do you think you are? I'm gonna f you have warrants. The insurance company doesn't want you on the boat if you got warrants, no matter what they are. I sat right here and said, do you have warrants before the season? And you said no. And don't tell me you didn't know. No, oh, I, I didn't know I had You didn't know. You didn't know. I don't know, man. What am I supposed to do and what am I supposed to say? I've asked you man-to-man -man questions. You've given me answers and they've been wrong. 
through the whole thing. I've gone to bat for you, keeping you to stick around. What am I supposed to do? When I ask you, do you have warrants? Why do you say no? I've run these boats since 1989, and I've had people with 15 grandmothers die. I've heard every excuse and reason, and you're kind of full of excuses and reasons. I gotta let you go. Cut and dry, man. Well, um, why don't you be an honest man instead of lying? Well, I don't give a work at gas when I ask you a manly question and lie to me time and time again. You lie to everybody. This job used to be about fishing, not about attorneys and babysitters. When I hired him, he was supposed to be, he told me a lot of stuff, so. He was supposed to be more of an asset. You know what, you can lie all you want, but when you get out there, you, you can't hide it. Yeah, really. He couldn't hide it. I hate always being the bad guy, but I got people I have to answer to. It's over and over, man, it's like, Ronnie, how do you feel now that Jared's gone? Uh, it kind of sucks that he's gone. He's, I, I didn't really have too much problem with him. We talked a lot, but I don't know. I think he's going to go better on deck. And that's what matters. Less tension, less people all mad at each other. I mean, it goes downhill quick, you know? <laughs> Bottom of that hill. Yeah, exactly. So. If someone calls and asks us about Jared, we're going to tell him the honest truth. Bait. Bait. Just bait. 13-year bait guy. Hey, Ronnie. Yeah. What was the most important lesson you learned from Jared? Don't lie. <laughs> Quick learner. Two hundred and sixty kilometers northeast, on board the Wizard. We got good weather. We got pots and water on a long soak. We've got a mess to clean up. We've got a lot of work ahead of us right now, but um, the good news is we're working. Beep, 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 beep. Just 100 meters off the bow, <laughs> Captain Jonathan Hillstrand and the Time Bandit pay a visit to the wizard. Got me here. Yeah, I can hear you. Right on, right on, right on. <laughs> <laughs> You're a week into this season. I got a hunch you guys are doing pretty good. Um, things are going good. Uh, there's lots of crab around, you know. You're not too late. You're going to do good. No, we're, we're the main's running good, so that's behind us, thank God. You know, we're behind the eight ball. We're just getting started. I don't know. I don't think people realize how much pressure's on us to get these boats out of town, and, you know, I don't know. Good deal. Well, uh, I heard you went a little bit of crazy in town or something. What's the story on that? I just kind of... A lot of crap was catching up to me, and I ended up hanging out the bar stool about the time the boat was supposed to leave. My brother had to come rescue me and drag my ass out of the bar. Which he's never had to do that, so... Feel a little sheepish about that, but, you know, I've just been spending too much time. Too much time with a bottle, not enough time with my kids. Yeah, Roger, I, yeah. Well, you know, at least you have a brother that, that came and got you. You know, your kids are only an age one, one year than, like, my grandkids, you know? I spent Christmas out here last winter. And I missed out on their six-year-old Christmas. I can never get that back. <laughs> I'll hang out with you more in town there. Try to be a good influence on you. <laughs> yeah, the only time we're a good influence on each other is when we're out here fishing. That's where we're supposed to be. We're supposed to stay out here. 
I think most people would probably think I'm crazy going to John Hillstrand as a therapist, but you know, it might not actually be a bad idea. Yeah, I know. I was thinking, uh, I'm not going to give anybody any, any advice. All right. Okay, John. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, buddy. I'll see you. Uh, the deck's all secure. Shots are all put away. Cool. You guys are all back in the house. Just, uh, we just made this move, and it's crunch time, so I figure I'm going to show you what I did. There's been a lot of times that I've wanted to share some information, and for some reason, you haven't really spent the time up here. Do you? Am I wasting my time and thought, do you want to do this or not? I don't get it. I do want to do this, but I don't. I don't really like how I've talked to you all the time. Like, well, you know what? You? you know what? I'm sorry. You're gonna have to have some thicker skin to be a captain, anyway. I so. have a lot of thick skin because I deal with it year in and year out. You know. It, I'm not going to kiss your ass to get you to the wheel, huh? And I never asked you to kiss my ass. I have done well. God. I, have I not? Why can't I? What? Why does that have to be a one-way street? Why you know what? This wheelhouse is a one-way street, Zach. Right. And it's a street you haven't traveled on. And it, obviously, it's a street you don't want bad enough because you're not doing anything to get here. Do you, well, are you ready to go? Obviously not. I mean, No, you, you tell me. Are no, you ready I, to go? I'm not ready to go. Why not? Why are you not ready to up here? Why not? Because I obviously have personal issues with you. That's what it is. Wow. Well, I'm, I'm glad it's out. And you know what? You're right. I It's something deep in you. It's no, you're, it's both of us. It's you're not you're, just you're me. your mother's child. Okay. You are your mother's child. All right. I worked as much as 10 and a half months when I was living at home with you guys because I thought the key to happiness and success was sending enough money home that your mom had a cleaning lady, you guys had a nanny, you went to private school. And it wasn't the answer. It was absolutely the wrong answer because I wasn't there. And all it did was tear the family apart. Okay. I don't know. I'm me, and I can't change it. And I know I wasn't there, but I'm here now. A little late. I'm 31 now. Well. I don't know, buddy. I didn't know it was just the way I talked to you that would keep you from advancing your life. You're telling me you can't learn from me, and then I guess you can't learn from me. I don't know what else to do. Sorry I let you down as a dad. So whatever your plans are, Good luck. I don't I don't understand how you plan on proceeding with this. I don't know where my son and I go from here. I really don't. I'm just like, I would have given anything to have somebody push me like I've tried to push him to follow in my footsteps. You don't get along. And that's my fault. I, I mean, I, 
I can't win. Oh, I still got a season to finish. This whole thing's very perplexing. It has been a really strange day of soul searching today about this whole Zach thing. I want to be Captain Sun, but. Captain Wild Bill Bukrowski and his son Zach have had a falling out. I'm lost, confused. I feel a little betrayed. It's life changing for me what Zach told me. There's a lot of resentment on who I am being a commercial fisherman and a dad in Zach's mind. If you think about it, what he resents in me, I'm working on turning him into the same guy. Maybe Zach thinks that by him taking over the captain's chair, he's going to end up like me. And obviously, he doesn't like the outcome of me. I don't know. Today was a super tough day. I already know I'm not going to be a captain like my dad. He wants me to be little mini Bill, and I'm not going to be little mini Bill. I'm going to be me. I'm going to take pieces of my dad, but I don't want to take the whole thing. The only thing I could say of Zach following in my footsteps, you're going to have to ask Zach which way he's going to walk. He's either going to walk up the stairs or walk off the boat. He's got to make the choice. And if he doesn't, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Who knows? Maybe a big finish will snap him out of it. Unable to solve the problem with his son. I've been sitting on his buoy for. Bill refocuses on the thing he knows best catching crab. I'd love to see a strong one here. I hope so. I need it. Bill decided to make a move. This is either going to save our season or extend it by a long time. Yeah, took a big risk doing this. And there's an outside chance it ain't going to pay off. I feel nervous here. It's like this could change my day. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> cha -cha -cha -ching. Food, Eddie's got some good food for us. Hey, how did the uh, ultrasound go? Potential health complications. The baby's due date is being moved up. You might miss the birth of your baby. What is going on? Tell me. 
the, ba the baby's not growing right, and so they need to get the baby out. Something like that. That sucks. I don't want to see you miss that. I'll try my best to get you home. So I just got to get this gear back in the water as fast as I can and get my crap. Thank you, John. Basically, just don't have babies when you're out here opelio fishing. I think the baby's name should be opelio or snow baby. Snow crab baby. On well, the time bandit. I have a real nightmare where a guy has to go home. The weather's definitely come up and making it a more of a bitch. I gotta load this boat because Blind Dog's wife wants him home for the delivery of the baby. Under pressure to deliver his crab and get deckhand Kyle Dyerly to the maternity ward. I'm on a mission. Captain Jonathan Hillstrand launched a desperate Hail Mary set on new grounds. It's real crucial we're going against the green. I mean, everybody else is over there. This could be the wrong thing to do, but we'll find out. With 58,000 pounds left to catch. OK, guys. A young deckhand's hopes and a veteran skipper's offload are both riding on this string. I love you. I care about you, so we need crab in these pots. Let's go. Let's go. And here we go. Pot number one. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Not looking. Tell me when it comes up. <laughs> that was intense. That was intense oh, there. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> One, six, five. 165. <laughs> Not too shabby. A lot better than where we came from. Come on, lady, look. Come on, go. Yeah, yeah. Go time. Woo. Look at that pot. Yeah, brother. Yeah. As quick as you humanly possibly can dump it back, dump it back. We have a chance now. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Just made his day. All he wants is these tanks full. But I can't stop. Yeah. I love you, man. Keeping a brutal pace, the time bandit boys battle punishing winds in heavy seas. Yeah, baby. To bring the Opelio Crab bounty aboard. 195. Yeah! See how much room is in that tank. That much room! That much room! <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen no one do that. <laughs> oh, we almost got her done. Two more pots, guys, and that's it. I'm so happy for you, Kyle. Your wife's going to cry when she finds out. No! Oh, dude, you lucky son of a little bit. You can go see that baby before. Your wife's going to be so happy when you call her. But you're not calling her yet, because you got possible. Miracle, magic, it's magic, baby. In St. Paul Harbor. We got our first load off. It felt really good. Can't wait to get back out there and catch some more. 150,000 pounds to go. We're going to do that if we call ice close. The Time Bandit closes the lid on a successful 138,000 pound offload. 
and prepares to send off father-to-be Kyle Dyerly. Getting out of here. We're gonna go send him off the right way. With a proper hill strand goodbye. Just have it behind your back, sort of the walk in the group. Eddie, you gotta light, you gotta run, walk in front of us to block us. You, we're gonna miss you, you know? But at the same time, <laughs> the end of the day, your wife and the kid need you, that's more than important than us. All right, let's go send him off white. I feel like I miss my, my, my husband, too. He's been cheating on me all along. <laughs> you see that down? Oh, God! Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna miss you too. Oh. <laughs> the blind dog. Oh. <laughs> the blind dog, I don't care. Best love fight ever. Anyway, man, I miss you, buddy. Hope you have a good safe, uh, healthy baby. Thanks, man. And uh, we get home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just, I hope they let you on the plane <laughs> looking like that. I don't know. Clean up. You gotta go, man. Okay. Hey, man. Safe. All righty. <laughs> Hope I don't miss my flight. 415 miles northwest of Dutch Harbor. A few more bots, then uh, call it a night. On the 125 foot northwestern. Tired. If it's not moving, you get even more tired. The guys are pretty worn out, I'm sure. They're not spring chickens anymore. Let's face it here. It'll be a struggle to fill it. So now it's going to be real hard to regroup. And we have a lot of pounds to catch. I'm just going to pull the plug, let the guys take a break, and then uh, we'll start in the morning. I just hope we can do it. Oh, got everybody up on time, and the timing was right to put us here. Back at the helm, Sig turns his attention to stuffing his tanks. I got a string right here. I'm going to start hauling right now. You nervous? So there's a lot of ifs here, a lot of maybes, but these, these little buggers are moving around. They're not playing nice. We just got to stick to what we our gut says and just do it. We'll see what they do here. Come on, they're scrapping. They're please, 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 please. Yeah. Yes, Ricky gave it a thumbs up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What are we looking at? Trees? Three plus. Three plus right here. Yep. Awesome! That's good news. Real good news. We just got to stay on crab right now, you know? How are we doing, then? I'll let you know how we're doing in three, two, one. Oh, we're doing good. Yeah. Yeah. Should we set it back? Oh, <laughs> yeah, set it back, I think, huh? With his gear on the crab. But so far, so good. If we can fill those two tanks, it's good news. It's real good news. The captain will stick around. OK, I want you to haul this string. I you to take a feel how it feels to haul a 3 hunsky. Give it a try. Okay. I'll watch. I'm right here. OK, well, you guys don't know what to do. All right, turn That's north. That's east. Keeping the line from under the boat. If you can do that, then you're you making. I'll show you. You might want to slow down a little bit. Look at the guys. You got to look at your guys. Hey, right here. Slow down. Now you can go, because he's on the rail. He's waiting for you now. OK. 
he got it. Full? There you go. You see how hard it is to make those sharp turns? Oh, good. Three twenty. Three two zero. You see your next pot? It's right there. Yeah. Okay. Pots up. A little bit to port. Straight ahead. They're ready. There. What do I do? What do I do? You're, they're ready. It's all you. This one's all you. I still don't know what I'm doing. Though. It's OK. <laughs> Go on. Well, no, I'm way off. No, you're OK. He got it, Port, and then move. Oh, nice job, knuckleheads. <laughs> Where'd he go? He's coming up on the bag, better than six. Couldn't oh, even tell. Hi, Vibe, good job. That wasn't so bad. No. <laughs> Come on. On the Northwestern. Nice big pots. That's the way to end it. <laughs> yeah. Pretty good. That's pretty good there. Yep. Captain in training, Mandy Hansen, prepares to close out the boat's latest Opelio trip. Yeah. It was a grind, but you know, boat's close to being full, real close. Really took the edge off, you know, all these watches and all the stuff we got to go through. The unfortunate part is that she's leaving. And you're going home. Yeah. The end of the string right here. Down to her last pot. Say, so, you guys got that hook ready? You guys have that hook ready? Sig fires up a special Northwestern goodbye for his daughter. What? Do you have the hook ready? No. One hook. What, what kind of hook? Put the flame on. <laughs> That's horrible. Oh, you want the flaming hook, is that what you're saying? I want a flaming hook, damn it. All right, you're coming up. That's so precious. Would you please? <laughs> you're awesome. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Flame on, guys. Yeah! stressful I didn't want to do it at first but you know my dad always forces me to do things and then it ends up being great anyhow now that's fun. you don't know how long the boat's gonna be around or how long your folks are gonna be around so you want to be able to cherish those moments and take advantage of it I guess all right how about I want to get this sucker out of here yeah it worked out you got your flame good job Mandy Mandy yeah. Thank you so much. I love you for doing that. <laughs> Thank you. Score Hansons. 275 miles southeast on the 110-foot Brenna A. Oh! Yeah, the end is in sight here for my first season in the wheelhouse. And uh, good fishing, but they're moving in. I was once all by myself, and now there's boats coming in my area. Seven and a half weeks into his inaugural season, first time Captain Sean Dwyer yeah. brings on full pots of bear dye. Good thing I got you on our But his hot spot has become a mob scene. Everyone's battling over the same pile of crab. I think I found it first, but doesn't really matter if I'm getting set on top of. 
We're gonna stack them. I think I've got a little bit of an edge compared to all the boats around me because I've been here longest. I know the crab are coming from that direction. And we're gonna go over here and probably stack up and march in this way. So I'm gonna shift my whole pile of gear west. Get ahead of them. Keep everyone else away from my crab. With his ground overrun, the rookie skipper plays his final card. I just gotta stay ahead of these guys for a little while longer. They will be hitting what's left over. Moving his gear to the head of the crab school, leaving the dregs for the fleet. There's a lot of guys moved into the neighborhood here in the last few days, so we need to really hustle to get out of here before it's all gone. Got to get these things on board quickly and easily. With Britt being gone, the boys are really getting put to the test down there with the four-man deck. So the team's got to stay strong. We got to make sure we finish this thing out. Down a deckhand, every crewman must be at peak performance for Sean to execute his plan. They wanted a four-man deck. And now's their time to prove it to me that uh, this was the good decision to make. What are you waiting for? Slow. Got to be faster than that, man. You can only do so much. You got to get those things over faster. I mean, that was 45 seconds. That's on you. That's all your responsibility. Oh, I you know. Don't over the pot. I know. These guys have been working hard as a four-man deck, but you guys are getting a little complacent towards the end of the trip here. You know, they're tired. Their process is all No. You got four people at the table counting like 60 crap. They are not getting back to their positions in time. What's taking so long? Speed out. I'm not slowing down. Just three pots of an hour so that they can do everything one at a time. You can lose the game right at the fourth quarter. And you can lose your season right here, right now, anytime, anywhere. So you just don't stop at the end. Why give up? We are just coming up on the Bear Die grounds. On the Brenna A. It's two in the morning. Wake up, come out here, think I'm all by myself. Nope, not the case. Lots of boats out here now. After moving 50 miles away from the pack to find fresh grounds. So there's blips on the radar, pots next to mine. Captain Sean Dwyer wakes to find the pack has followed him. They're just pouring in. There's one after another. And I know that as soon as they get in here, they call all their buddies. There's going to be even more boats in here. So we got to get them quickly. Just a few hours ahead of his competition. Time to wake everybody up. Get going. Sean presses his crew into action. Time to get up, get rolling. There's guys working all around us. We just can't slow down. Don't waste any time out there. Let's do it. I'll wake up here in a minute. Walking Wally worry. Those boys are tired. I know they are. But I pretty much gambled my parents' business to get this boat out here. There's a lot on the line. As the numbers stand right now, we've only got 15,000 pounds up to catch or something like that. It's a nice, fresh start. But with any fresh start, you just don't know what's going to happen. Hopefully, that 15 or 20K is in the gear. If it's not, It looks good. It's awesome. Yeah. 
Nah, it's a good looking pot. Uh, it looked really good. Crab and trap. A lot of crab going in that tank. All I can hear is ting, ting, crab going in the hopper. It's a good sound. Two, four, two. Damn. That's awesome. Yeah. Money coming over the rail. Another one. Yeah, baby. Nailing it. Yeah, boy! 2.37. With numbers like this, man, we're not stopping. We got to grind on these things. You set it back. You guys know my policy. <laughs> Put them on the boat as fast as possible. The skipper sets directly back on the school below. We got to get these things. Get him before the next guy does. To scoop up his remaining quota before the fleet beats him to it. Woo! Yeah. We gotta fill these tanks. They are not gonna fill me now. Yeah! Oh, yeah! We like to hear that. We're all That's like a trick. Is that it? We're doing well. Nice. Our production level has just gone way up. The other day, we hauled six pots an hour. Now I'm getting them at 12 pots an hour. That's progression right there. Well, that's what we're doing. We're grinding away. Not bad for a four-man crew. <laughs> Start strong, finish strong. That's what we're doing. It's not over yet, but we're getting closer. Yeah, that's nice. Another beauty. Top notch. On the soccer. I'm just kicking right now. You guys are jamming. Pretty much every one of these crabs is going in. So right now, I'm definitely glad that I moved my gear here. Holy cow. It was a gamble, and it worked. Captain Jake Anderson continues to cash in on his latest Opelio set. And by my numbers, I'm catching my quota in a timely fashion. I can deliver to St. Paul as soon as I haul these last two pots. And with an offload just 48 hours away, the skipper is primed to deliver with his tanks plugged. Four, five, five! Nice yeah, buddy! That makes me feel like a fisherman. Oh, yeah! How do you like that? Holy <laughs> What do you think about that, Tommy? Bought bigger in the dungeon pot, huh? And Tommy's got a second wind. <laughs> He's moving around again. They just rocking. Might be slower because he's big, but he still got his heart in the game. And I, I just truly love that about him. My body feels so much better. It's like nice to me. Last one, fellas. Yeah! When you get on crab, it makes everything a lot better. You know, the whole morale picks up, people pick it up. Even Tommy's moving now. <laughs> Tommy, how you doing? I think I seen a half smile out of you there. <laughs> no, I really think Tommy's turn around. He just has to um, really dig in, and he's already doing that. I'm hoping I can convince him to come back for King Crab. It makes me feel really good and makes me really proud of him. You, no matter how low you get or how tired you get or anything, it's not going to last forever. Popped in, work topped off on the tank. Nice job, you guys. Everybody's very happy right now. Got him back! What the f Yeah! <laughs> you guys can uh, come in. Doesn't matter what you start off with, matters what you make of it. Hey, Jake, uh, something awkward to tell you. What's going on? Unfortunately. I have to take off. For Dungeon S, I'm taking it. 
Yeah, I just got a call from my wife. And, uh, I guess they let the sporties go and they're going to let us go a week after the sporties. So. It's really f***ing you, Jake. I'm so f***ing really I know, I'm sorry it worked out this way. I thought we'd get to her last trip down and it would be done. And how much do you usually make? Like how much? I mean, like, let's make 40 grand in the first two weeks. You know, before I came out here for this last trip, I'm $180,000 in the hole. Backwards. So going to Dutch is another $6,000. I can't yell at you. I, I don't have it in me. I gotta find a new crew member. <sighs> well, it's not gonna take much. So, I mean, it's all water and the bridge, and I'll have to, I'll, I'll manage it. I'll get through and I'll make it. We got a ways to go to Dutch. I'm gonna take it and I'll. Uh, outside St. Paul Harbor. Last trip was just a surprise out of left field. Well, we did it. On the Saka. Yeah, it's a good feeling coming in, seeing land, seeing town, knowing you're about to offload. It's kind of the culmination of all your hard work. After a week at sea, Captain Jake Anderson ties up at the dock. We are officially now in St. Paul. Time. We are going to pump down and uh, we're going to offload this crab. Crab are beautiful. Sean and the guys did an excellent job putting in nothing but the best product. Uh, I just want to get out of here. Tommy's leaving, uh, which now, in turn, I have to head to Dutch as fast as I possibly can to drop Tommy off. Instead of heading right back out to the fishing grounds, Jake must make a 40-hour detour to Dutch Harbor to offload deckhand Tommy Walsh. He's done. He's got to go run his Dungeness boat. So I'm It's awesome. It's typical. Anyway, should just be a textbook offload. Over the next five hours, the saga delivered 132,000 pounds of crab, worth $330,000. They just finished up with the last brailer. Now I got to hurry up, drop Tommy off, so I can keep fishing and keep him on crab. We're going to get out of here. Throw the line. I'll move up a little bit, and I'll spring off that bow. Watch my block. Tell him to watch my block. I got a crew waiting at home. I got a, I got a boat to run at home. I got a, my, I got my crab. Get the bag in there, crab. Tommy. In between the block. Oh my. Don't slack it off. Don't slack it off. Block. What you want me to do with it? Stick around the motor. Stick it right on the motor. Good job. Good job, Tommy. Thanks. I'm so done with that guy. It's a good thing Tommy's going home. I'm so pissed at him right now. I'm not in the mood to deal with right now. Broke my captain shirt too. I can't wait till this season's over. 
on the 125-foot Northwestern. Right now, the guys are in the engine room. It didn't look good at all. Everything is complete toast. It's fried. More than halfway through the winter season, Captain Zig Hansen and crew are still licking their wounds. I don't think there's one specific reason why that panel caught fire. If there is, we haven't found it. On this right now, and not right now. So I took those out. I unplugged all those. I just went four into that, and from here to that. And I used what I could. Now that all that dry cam's on everything, once we got this, we gotta wipe everything down and get everything cleaned out because. Just days ago, in the midst of their best fishing of the season, Sig faced his worst nightmare. An engine room fire at sea. We had cables flowing in, plus breakers, fuses. And so they're finally starting to put something into the panel. We've got some momentum here. They did a good job here. Uh, you can see everything's new, but it's still not 100%. Captain Sig Hansen inspects the newly repaired electrical panel. For now, this is temporary, but at least it'll get us through the season so we can, we can finish up what we started. There's just one final hurdle before the boats can head back to sea, throwing the switch. Well, we're getting everything started up here. We've been on shore power. If everything passes the test, we'll head out of here. We're going to go from this breaker shore power over to the big one starboard, and that's the one that burned us down. Guess we're ready. <laughs> oh, we're ready as we're going to be. OK, here we go. Buttons a crane. You see the light flicker and then flicker again. Should be on. One. Two. Hydros, that block's been out for eight days. Nice. I'm gonna try a crane. on deck. Northwestern is moving again. After being shut down for over a week, the Northwestern is back. Let's go, let's go. Get away from the dock here. Let's go start another trip. Are you ready for this one, Mandy? It's been damn near two weeks since we pulled those pots. So hopefully there's crab in these pots. Hopefully they didn't crawl out. Hopefully there's no holes. Hopefully there's no sand fleas that are eating the crab. With his crab sitting idle on the sea floor for over a week, the condition of what's in the pots is anyone's guess. What else can I say? I'm just gonna go string by string. And if, uh, if, they, if they do something, great. If they fail, really hard to recover. Oh. See if there's any crab in this thing. I know you're kidding. Pull the pot. No, I'm not kidding. You got to shut them down? No. Oh, God. 
Oh, God. Where is this dark cloud coming from, man? Uh, there's a leak on, on the hose on the coiler. Oh, yeah, it's cracked all the way through. Well, the coiler, I mean, we got so much line on these pots. If it takes 10 minutes to fix, it'll save you, I don't know, a day in the long run of hand coiling. It's a lot of hand coiling. With 450 feet of line on each pot, the coiler sure does make life easier. I'm not going to let a little leak scare me here, <laughs> although it does. Sure you want to be a crab fisherman? Just one, one after the next. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lord. Oh, man. And it's all clean? All clean. That is bizarre, fellas. I feel like we've been just behind the eight ball after that fire. All I can say is I'm thankful that we saw a couple of decent numbers here because that's the shot in the arm that I needed myself. And uh, as far as a crew motivator, that really uh, helped. On the 125 foot Northwestern. They did a good job here. Uh, you can see everything's new, but it's still not 100%. Captain Sig Hansen inspects the newly repaired electrical panel. For now, this is temporary, but at least it'll get us through the season so we can, we can finish up what we started. There's just one final hurdle before the boat can head back to sea, throwing the switch. Well, we're getting everything started up here. We've been on shore power. If everything passes the test, we'll head out of here. We're gonna go from this breaker shore power we're the big one starboard, and that's the one that burned us down. Guess we're ready. <laughs> oh. Where are you we're gonna be? Okay, here we go. Buttons a crane. You should see the light flicker and then flicker again. It should be on. One, two. Hydros, that block's been out for eight days. Nice. I'm gonna try a crane. After being shut down for over a week, the Northwestern is back. 
Let's go, let's go. Get away from the dock here. Let's go start another trip. Northwestern is back officially on her own power. That's a good feeling. It is. Being perfectly honest, I'm a little skittish. You know, it's uh, boat went through a fire, and it is a whole new panel. You know, now you got to get, you got to go out there, refine crab, restart your season, regain a momentum, and try to keep it going. And that's, it's tough. 335 miles northwest of Dutch Harbor. Where's everybody? Ah. We on deck? Yep, we're good. On the northwestern. Powwow. Ready to start hauling? We're ready for 10 days. I know. Actually, it's been exactly 14 days since we hauled the last pots here. It's crazy. Finally back on the grounds after the boat caught fire. But don't let it get you down. I mean, like, we're, we're starting over. This is it. Captain Sig Hansen rallies his troops. Starting over. Second half, new start. Let's go. Let's get hauling. Are you ready for this one, Mandy? It's been damn near two weeks since we pulled those pots. So hopefully there's crab in these pots. Hopefully they didn't crawl out. Hopefully there's no holes. Hopefully there's no sand fleas that are eating the crab. With his crab sitting idle on the sea floor for over a week, the condition of what's in the pots is anyone's guess. What else can I say? I'm just gonna go string by string. And if, uh, if, they, if they do something, great. If they fail, really. Hard to recover. Let's see if there's any crab in this thing. I know you're kidding. Pull the pot. No, I'm not kidding. You got to shut them down? No. Oh, God. Oh, God. Where is this dark cloud coming from, man? Uh, there's a leak on, on the hose on the coiler. Oh, yeah, it's cracked all the way through. Well, the coiler, I mean, we got so much line on these pots. If it takes 10 minutes to fix, it'll save you, I don't know, a day in the long run of hand coiling. It's a lot of hand coiling. With 450 feet of line on each pot, the coiler sure does make life easier. I'm not going to let a little leak scare me here. Although it does. Okay, we're good. Okay, we're off and running. All right, first pop coming up after our fix. You sure, you want to be a crab fisherman? Just one, one. After the next. <laughs> Come on now, let's see some 300s. Big numbers. Thank you so much, Lord. Oh, man. And it's all clean? All clean. That is bizarre, fellas. Oh, my God. Thank you. That's 
you feel like we've been just behind the eight ball after that fire. All I can say is I'm thankful that we saw a couple of decent numbers here because that's the shot in the arm that I needed myself. And uh, as far as a crew motivator, that really uh, helped. Well, we were prospecting when we set the gear. Well, now whatever's in the gear is old news. Seven, eight hundred, and that thing. This is really fun. Downstairs in the engine room? Yep. Okay, I'm ready. You go down? Calm down. down. <laughs> Some air. Come on, wait a minute. Come on, get some air. It's not Edgar. Close that door. Right open the wheelhouse door, too. Well, I'll shut this one. It'll go on. With the fire extinguished, captain and crew must assess the damage, then hatch a plan to get home. Still 170 miles from land on the northwestern. Right now, Edgar's trying to get that panel cleaned up so that we can utilize our four-cylinder engine and uh, isolate a couple of those breakers so that we can at least get power to our crab pumps. That's our priority right now. After a fire in the engine room took out the boat's electrical system, Engineer Edgar Hansen has been working 24-7 to restore power. Get up, get up. 
to bring the pumps back online. Edgar must negotiate a rat's nest of burnt wires and bad connections. those compressor uh uh come on baby yeah and there was light <laughs> and it was good yeah. and we have a pump we can just hey, get pump turn it on the steering okay really Okay, don't touch Manny. Or, or get her, get her, get her straight now. Norm, can you turn on that GPS that runs this autopilot, please? Get her going. Uh, keep her on 105. Yeah, this one. On, on. Oh! What was that? That was that light. Steer, steer, left, port, port, port. What the hell was that? It was right here. Right here. It was right there. Oh, that light bulb? Is it this? Steer to port. Yeah, that's Well, we... <laughs> I thought it was your phone. Why, why, why did that happen? Oh, you arced it on the... Uh... Hold on! We got another fire up here! Smart guy! All right, uh, steer to starboard and then stop. This is 145. OK, just now back up. So I now have, uh, OK, here we go. OK, uh, Manny, don't touch. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got it. I got steering. I got manual. Okay, Mandy, you're on watch. Get in here, hey! There, a little easier. Keep this at 104. Sit right there. Steer. Right there. Rudder, this. Awesome! <laughs> Edgar surprises me every day. He's, he, you know, he never went to school, no nothing. But most of the fishermen that I know, they never went to school. Uh, they've learned everything they do know from experience, uh, from failure alone. You know, it takes time to work things back up, and that's how they learn by pulling things apart and putting it back together and coming into these situations. And that pump, you're just on that aft pump. I got all three pumps going. Oh no! We're out of here. I'm going to Dutch. OK, good job. Thanks. On the Northwestern. I chose not to fish out there in 24-foot seas. It's so late in the game, I just don't want anybody to get hurt. And I'm beating the boat up. Heavy seas and 40-knot winds have forced Captain Sig Hansen to an early offload. You've got all the whitewater breakers coming up on that jetty. So you got to surf your way in and then turn 90 degrees to get into that place. But maneuvering into the harbor is a different story. If Sig's timing is off just slightly and a wave catches the broadside, the Northwestern and her crew will be smashed across the treacherous jetty. Wow, wow, wow. Well. I think we're stuck out here. With the harbor entrance inaccessible. And that risk is not worth it. Once again, Mother Nature is in control. Not me. Instead of battling the waves to enter the harbor. I don't want to die out here. <laughs> Captain Sig will drop anchor 
and wait for calmer seas. Anchor up. We got a nice muddy bottom here, but but it's not the best. There you go. All right, you're out. So when we anchor up, it's tough because you've got swell coming one way and wind going the other. So even though your boat's being held back by the wind, you still got that swell rocking and rolling. Yep. Give it a kick. a day for this to mellow out, if not more. So just because you're sitting on anchor doesn't mean you're sitting pretty. And you got a big ground swell, surge. And we got to keep an eye on things here. The anchor grabs a hold of the bottom But the extreme weather puts maximum stress on the old equipment. I think it'd be all right. She's holding, but we do have this swell coming in. Oh. It's busted. It's lost it. No. The cable holding the boat's 1,500-pound anchor cable snapped. is broken. This sucks. You got the wind holding us back, and then a big swell came in. It was just enough to part the cable. We'll be jogging tonight. Without an anchor, both boats and crew <sighs> are vulnerable to the wrath of the Bering Sea. That was big. All you hear is pow! Knew it was gone. So now our anchor is on the bottom. I'm trying to think if I can get that thing back. You guys out there? Yeah. Come up for a sec. Let's get a game plan here. Gotta find a way to retrieve the anchor. The cable snapped between the boat and the two buoys which mark the severed anchor cable's location. The cable is on those bags. I think if you can uh, get a lasso around those surge bags, if I bring it up to the side of those surge bags, and then you just loop it, just put a nylon, loop, boom. Then you can take that nylon, and you run it, run it around, and you pull them both up. They're both going to wind up. See what I mean? Allow me to translate. To retrieve the anchor, they need to reconnect the two pieces of broken cable with a nylon line. And then hope it holds as they winch the 5,300 pounds of cable, chain, and anchor back aboard the boat. I mean, do you think that's doable? Easier said than done. Let's try it. Reel it up. Nice, big, big lasso. Come on, Carl. Do it. Uh, Get it, Carl. Don't jump. Got away. There we go. Hey. hey. Quickly. Uh. Go, go, go. Watch out. Caught up the flat top a little. Oh, got it. You gonna tie it on the oh. end? Nicely done. With the two ends of the cable connected by a three-quarter inch nylon line, it's now up to SIG to maneuver the boat to haul up the 5,000 pounds of steel. OK, go easy. I need to just keep slack. 
My job is to stay ahead of it so that we lift the cable straight up if I can. We don't want any strain on it now because you'll just snap that line. That line is solely there to lift up that cable. You're done. Lift it up. Okay, bring it up, man. Get that cable up. Try to overlap it so you get a bite. If we can get a wrap on that drum, then we've got it. Okay, coming off that drum. Oh yeah, we got it. That's ours. We own it. Not bad. Get our anchor back. Hey, <laughs> that was slick. I'm afraid to ask what's next. You guys ready to go? On the saga. So you got how many more pots of ours and then you got yeah. cod pots? Captain Jake Anderson ties up loose ends before throwing lines. It's like everything's getting together on the boat. It's yeah. Where's Corey? I haven't, I haven't seen him, obviously. But newest crew member, Corey Eisenbarth, has yet to make an appearance. I just wanted to know what's going on. It was New Year's Eve last night. I let everybody go out all night. I just didn't know where Corey is, just because I've had problems with partying in the past. I just get worried. Where's the captain? There he is! We still have 300,000 pounds to yeah. catch. My kids, you know, need clothes. I got a packing I got to We got to catch something. We, we are. catch something. We are. OK. We're going to. I got up at 4.30 this morning. I pulled up a bunch of shots of line. I worked on the gear. I got the weather report. And then I started getting drunk. And I'm ready to go on a bender. I got captain. I got my captain right here. <laughs> OK, I'm going to go work on the gear then. That was bad. That was really bad. You can't talk to alcohol, especially when it's in charge of a machine like that. I'm not ready to go drinking. It's straight up booze, man. So I can't trust it. But it's going to pose a problem for me, because then I lose control of my boat, and I can't lose control of my boat. on the Northwestern. Nervous? No. You should be nervous. It's not the most tender start we were looking for, but we've been in a hurry all night long to get these pots off to beat this weather. Well, we're under the gun because it just keeps getting worse. Having set his gear throughout the night. Hopefully we can get this string off without any incidents and uh, then it's time to wait. Captain Sig Hansen has one string left to clear his deck. Be careful! Ooh. Hang on, man. It's starting to just, it's not gusting, it's really starting to come. I think I'm gonna call this string a nick of time because it's starting to howl, man. You hear that in the rafters howling? That's when it's blowing over 50 and just starting. The waves haven't really caught up with the wind yet. It's supposed to be gusting up to 70 soon, so I'd like to be inside when it happens. Hell of a start to 216. I don't remember one in a while like this. Keep it together. Three left. I was starting to stress out a little bit, you know, clock's ticking. Hang on, get out of the way. Get this 
last one off and then uh, and then we can just take a break here. attention gotta pay attention that's what sucks when they break right over the bow like that you guys all right yeah. at the end of their first set a 35 foot rogue wave ravaged the northwestern's bow Right there, get a little away, catch some crowd. Gotta pay attention. Last part coming up. Be careful. Oh, you. Oh, yeah, I finally get the gear off. Oh, uh, it's blowing now. What are we trying to get the gear off? Nice work, guys. That was well done. Those guys don't sound too nervous, and I'm just sitting there with the shakes. I have an all the pot, and we're already getting our butt kicked. At least the gear's soaking, and if we hit something, maybe it'll pay off. With an empty deck... There's nothing you can do. You just gotta idle into it and uh, wait for this to subside. Captain Sig Hansen jogs downwind to ride out the storm. Being out here, risking life and limb, I don't know. I've had better ideas. <laughs> the weather's totally screwed up for everything we want to do. Buckle there, buckle there. So I'm like, oh, the whole bow's buckled. I thought paint was coming up there, and the whole thing's bent. It's cracked. And I didn't notice that one up there. There's a hole in the uh, right in the rim. Oh, yeah, to peel it all up. Oh, yeah, even that one stanchion's bent. Even that's bent, and you can see the paint behind it on the crack. Yeah, we tore it up. No, that's crunched, man. Yeah. Even that rib is bent. I know. It's bent. So it moved. I think it's weak over there. I think that whole thing's been weak for years. But it should hold up to more than that. <laughs> Looks like we got to go to Seattle and fix that. The wave's power crumpled the thick steel like an empty tin can. We got something in the gear, man. That's all I can say. Bridles forward! No! You okay? Are you okay? Are you okay, Jamie? Jamie, are you all right? Okay. I can't run a crane. What are you talking about, dude? Is your foot okay? Did you want to get up there and help this guy? A crab pot appears to have landed on deck hand Jamie Smith. Yeah. 
it's not bleeding, that's good. But what happened? This like we got stuck in the pot. Boat took a roll, dude, and I had to set the pot down. And he didn't move his foot quick enough. Dude, it wasn't it, I quick, man. It's how, how are you? Of course, it's my fault. This is my fault that this happened. I know. I have dropped the pot. I know, dude. Yeah, make sure where your feet are. <laughs> let's just pull your sock off. Let's make sure you're okay. Pinched your boot, huh? Yeah, and whatever's underneath in between that. Yeah, if that pot would have really got your foot, dude, it would I know. I'll use the over two and I don't want to go. I'll take this. I'll no, take I this do. Girl. I'll yeah. it up there. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Dude, this is a joke, bro. But who is this guy, man? Running your debt cool, man. That's Dude, why I hired him. <laughs> you saw what he did this morning. He got everything. He, he could have used so many other ways, dude. There's so many other ways. But they, he got it out. Oh. I didn't see you digging in. That's because I didn't do anything, dude. You sitting there talking smack about me? Huh? What, man? Were you talking smack about me? About what? Are you saying what? I don't know what I'm doing? Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm you, saying? We don't know right? I don't know anything. Is that what you always say, non I'm oh, trying to help you help dude, me and teach you. What is there to teach, dude? Jake, just keep going. Jake, what is there to teach? Better yeah, oh, yeah, or what? Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. Your foot, there's not even a mark on it, dude. Right, right. Yeah, don't even listen to it. Let me dude, I'm going to quit. Man. Don't. Why would you quit? Hey, dude, Jamie, I'm running my mouth. Jamie, I'm serious. Talk, about, talk to me. Tim, just Jake, don't. I can't lose you, Tim. Jamie, don't start the. He is fine. I need him. Yes, I need push, him. Push. Good. That's good. <laughs> I don't give a good. Right. That guy. That man, he's in there telling them that I don't know how to run the hydraulics oh, yeah. and I can't land the pots right. There's not even a mark on his foot. Not one mark, dude. <laughs> he's faking it. It's you either get rid of him or get rid of me. I ain't putting up with him, dude. He's going to town right now. Game is Jamie, you got to throw. You got to throw now. Oh. God, Jamie, are you kidding me? Missing on the hook forces the boat to circle back, costing both time and money. I know you're trying hard, dude, but I'm really short on time, and I really got to make sure I pick these up close. Yeah. 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 Cup me, Gray. Go on, go with it. Go with it. Get going. Turn around, face the rail, coil up your line, and throw. That's it. Oh, you're good. Dude, they're so f***ing well the article. Stop talking and turn around, Jamie, please. 
stupid. Don't quit. Well, then go the die. Get the my boat.195 miles northwest of Dutch Harbor. Something exciting is going to happen today, I'm sure. On the 110-foot Brenna A. The weather's really nice right now. I may have been the last one to leave town, but no, I think it was worth the wait. After waiting out the storm in port. All right, first crab pot. Rookie captain Sean Dwyer and crew prepare to drop their first string of the new year. Yeah, first crab pot, 2016. Inside. Very nice, baby. So the first uh, 20K that we catch here is uh, going to SIG. That's the leftover from last season. I just can't quite uh, cross this one off the list yet. When everybody left town, it was almost like a race. You know, everybody was headed out regardless of the weather. and. I made the decision to stay in an extra day to avoid the storm. I think I made the right decision. It, it blew pretty hard out here. From what I understand, a lot of boats were shut down. It just didn't make sense. And maybe that's because I don't have as much experience and I'm not as comfortable on the boat as these other skippers. But in the long run, for me, I'm looking at three more months of being out here. If I cannot wear my crew out and not risk the safety of the boat, then for me, it's worth it, you know? The word is out, yeah, we're here to stay, and we'll see what happens. All right, first crap pot. Everybody ready? Stoked? Come on! Super excited? Two. All right, five miles. Whoa! Ah, I was just kidding. First pot is going over. Start of a new season, you never know what's gonna happen, really. But this is a spot just west of where I was last time that I saw some good activity at. I've got an idea, I've got the strategy, but uh, it's hard to say who's been fishing here while I was gone. So I could be on old ground right now. Goodbye. Getting in the water. Getting banging it out all day. The guys are ready to go. I'm excited too. I'm ready to get this show on the road. Here we go! <laughs> Start of Bear Die 2016. We're headed to our first crab string should have 48 hours soak. We'll see how it goes. On the 110-foot, 
Brenna A. The first pot's coming up. First pot of 2016. Oh. Paradise. It wasn't nice having to shut down for weather. So now we're gonna have to uh, be competitive out here. And uh, the first 20,000 pounds I catch is six crap. So the stakes are a little higher. We're good, we're good. First pot. We got one. <laughs> Dude, nice. <laughs> Numbers. 61. I think that's a great start. Woo. Crab here. <laughs> crab here, get your crab here. There's crab going in the tank. Yay. 73. Crab here. <laughs> I think that's what you call the triple 20. Right? On the dartboard? It's like, damn, Gina. Slamming those things in there. We're out here, and we're putting crab in the tank. And that's all that counts. We're going to pay the bills this trip. Six crab is done. 50 miles east. We pitched some really rough weather yesterday. We got away with it. It started getting scary. Is the time bandit. But I couldn't put any more pots on the boat. I didn't know where to go. So this is the best bet right now. So I'm just trying to get through this gear, trying to play catch up. Coming off bad weather and worse numbers. OK, when you're ready. Woo! Yeah, baby! Captain Jonathan Hillstrand looks to change his luck on new Opelio grounds. Please, God, help us have crab land on 300. So we'll see what we get. We, we need to catch some crab. Come on, baby! Whew, I'm nervous as heck. I'm scared. Scared to check the first one. Yeah! Get some, Charlie! Get some! <laughs> nice big crab. Woo! We're not off to too bad of a start, you know. Welcome aboard, boys. When that hopper's always full like that, that's a good sign. Three, three, five. Three thirty-five. Okay. Alrighty. Next one coming up. Hopefully, there's a lot of crap here. Yeah. You got crab legs. Oh, that guy. Thank you, Lord above. I think it's a hundred dollar bill. No, thousand dollar bill. Sexiest crab line. And monsters. Get down! Freddy's just loving it down there. <laughs> this is the best night this whole season. I love these guys. Whoop, oh! oh! You don't even know. We found a home. We finally found a home. Monster Pots have the time bandit back in the game, while endless blanks leave the saga trailing even farther behind. 445 miles northwest of Dutch Harbor. All right, fellas, today's the day. It's gonna get good. I promise. <sighs> That's a bold statement to make as a captain. On the saga. From 83 fathoms to now, we're in 72. 
and uh, that's that's a it's a big area. For some, this year's large bear die quota could be a career saver. For others, the reality is we have quite a bit of bear die quota. I can't do it all. That's the bottom line. It's too much of a good thing. I don't want to see any of the value of that quota being left on the table if I can help it. Because of that, I'm looking for a boat that would be dedicated to fishing Baradai. To lighten his 317,000 kilo load, the captain looks to lease some of his quota. There's a kid on a boat called Brenna A. His name is Sean Dwyer. It seems like he's got a pretty level head on his shoulders. I do know that uh, you know he's a go-getter and um, he's trying to make this thing work. Nearly 3,000 kilometers away in Seattle, Washington. Hello? Uh, Sean? Yep. Hey, Sean, this is Sig, Hanson. Sig calls 23-year-old captain of the Brenna A, Sean Dwyer. I've heard you're looking for quota, is that right? Yeah, I've been to the Brenna A, I haven't been fishing in a while. Well, I was looking for some opies, but they're, they're real hard to come by. All right, well, I've got an opportunity for you, and uh, it's it's bear die, you know? And it's close to a couple hundred thousand pounds. Okay. With the opies and the king crab. I just don't have the time to do it. Wow. Sig offers the young skipper a golden opportunity. 90,000 kilos of bear die quota. I mean, it's something that might really get your foot in the door and start building on a reputation. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Sean's original plan was to fish Opelio crab in January, but committing to SIG means rushing to launch three months earlier. I, I can make it happen, you know, I'll get my together and really get it going. I'll get it, I know I will. I just gotta, you know, get in gear. All right, all right, man, all right. Okay, Good thanks, luck. bye. When I first ran this boat, you know, I was looking for advice from a lot of guys and and uh, didn't seem to get much advice back. It's, it's a grind. The only word that I can use is grind. This is when the gloves come off and, you know, the fishing starts. Well, my name's Sean Dwyer and uh, I run the Brenna A. 23-year-old Captain Sean Dwyer prepares to join the Alaskan crab fleet. Sig wants me to get going on this. It's a pretty tight time frame, but I'm committed now. I already told him I'd do it. I have not ran a crab boat yet. I know, I know what I'm getting into, I think. We're taking all the tender gear off the boat, and then we'll be bringing on some crab gear, some crab pots later in the week here. We, this is just like a, a one check. <laughs> we got a lot more to go. Primarily a salmon tenderer, the Brenna A has spent the last month being converted to a crab boat. I've been working on boats since I was 12 years old. My dad started when he was 19. My mom's dad fished, his dad fished. I've learned a lot, like, uh, mechanically-wise from him, because he's pretty savvy. Not your average 23-year-old. Yeah, 23 is definitely the youngest I've ever heard of skipper, especially out crabbing. Sean is 23 years old, and he pretty much followed his dad around from the time he could walk, doing whatever Pat did. In the wheelhouse, Jenny Dwyer, boat owner and the captain's mother. The Pat was washing dishes, Sean was right next to him, working the spray hose. Until I got old enough to realize <laughs> yeah. that washing dishes was not fun. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Growing up, I just knew that this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to be where my dad was. His mentality was never take it easy on Sean because he's my kid. It was always, hey, tip, you know, pile it on, make it harder for him. You know, maybe he'll want to do something else. <laughs> you know, Pat was, he was a big, stocky guy. I mean, you know, he was shoving crown pots around the deck, and it got to the point where he couldn't even pick up a fork. When you're living with ALS and you're watching your father 
lose his ability to, to do stuff, you figure out what life is about pretty darn quickly. Three years ago, Sean's dad passed away from ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. I really admired him for how strong he was mentally. And instead of thinking, well, I'm dying, you know, here we go. It was, what's next? You know, how do I get to where I want to go? You just jump in with both feet. And so that's kind of what I'm doing here. He knew that buying this boat was going to be a, a, a level of security for us. And his goal was always to get this boat out crabbing. And he just ran out of time. With his father gone, the family's fortunes now rest on the young 23-year-old shoulders. It's like, there's no point in, in all the If you want to go fishing, go fishing. I'm going to go all in. 290 kilometers northeast of Dutch Harbor, on the northwestern. We're getting our bait prepared for our first couple of strings. Well, we're getting close to setting our gear. Try not to let the anticipation get the best of us. Much farther west this year. This is more of an old school area. It's been over 10 years. It's been 11 years since I've been out here. With the warm waters of El Nino spreading across the Bering Sea, Captain Sig Hansen is banking his first set on an old hunting ground. I'm going to set down the hill. And then we're going to set below what we just did, even deeper. Before the new season gets underway... We should get down there and see what those guys are doing. Some of you are going to bite that head for good luck. The skipper must see to an old world tradition. See, it's already starting to ooze a little bit. That's the good stuff right there. Got uh, a new crew member on board. Oh, we got a nice little thawed out herring here for Ricky. We're gonna make Rick do it. Happy Rick. <laughs> <laughs> <All the way. laughs> For a little added luck, you get Edgar takes one for the team. <laughs> oh, that was fermented. <laughs> you can always tell the greenhorn because he's the one who throws up. <laughs> he got into the guts. <laughs> the weather hasn't cooperated, so the guys have been going through hell. Why? Oh, man. 35 million pounds of crab out here somewhere. Where the hell are they? It's like a desert. Oh, no! Now, I've never seen anything like this so weak. Boo! We really got to get moving and find something. We're back in the search mode. There's nothing else we can do. I don't know, you know, if the crab were dug down, maybe they're just in the deep this year. When the weather's bad, a lot of times the paleo settle at the bottom. The last few years, we've been fishing in the 50 fathom range. I'm going to go even deeper, 82, 3, 4, 5 fathoms. So I think we should run up here. There's a big canyon. It's got cliffs on either side. Phil used to like to come up here a lot. Hopefully, it'll uh, pay off for us. I'm just going to slam gear all over it. Just hours before heading in, Sig plans to leave his comfort zone to fish a narrow chasm on the ocean floor. Uh, Nick I'm going to show you what we're doing. All right. I got a feeling the crab are right here. Into the canyon. We're set up to fish at 50 fathoms. But we're going to be playing in the canyon. We got to put some line on these things. Otherwise, it's just going to pull those bags down and uh, create a big problem. To reach the bottom of the canyon, deckhands must tie another 180 feet of line to every pot. As it's coming up, you break it, tie two knots, and throw the pot. Yeah. We're going to grab them and just bump them over a little bit. All right. Deal. It's good. 
Extra line adds 50 pounds to each shot. Oh, head don't hurt before something like that. They will out there. Guys are really tired. They're burned out today. But you just gotta go that extra mile. You know, you make big aggressive moves and. Sometimes it does does pay off, sometimes it doesn't. Right now, there's nothing else we can do. You know, now it's the chase. Time is of the essence. After rigging and setting their gear in deeper water. They've done uh, a lot of tying and untying knots, changing all the shots out. It wears on you, absolutely beat down. Captain Sig's quota and his crew's morale depend on this next string. We have today, and then we have to go in. I'm going to need about a 250, 300 crab average to get what we need. OK, come on, baby. Let's see what you got. Big pot. This is what we all live for is to be able to shovel like this. That's clean crab. Count it. 500. Five? Yeah, it's going down. Everything's going down. Yeah. This is a really good sign. Are they along this whole depth the whole way up and down the trench? I don't know. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Oh, 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 ho, ho. I can live with 700s all day long. <laughs> so they're definitely deep. That's where they're at. And we're setting them back. If the captain can maintain a 250 average, you'll beat the clock and deliver a full load of crab. Every day is a new game. You get that shot in the arm, and you feel like, OK, I can do something with this. Oh! <laughs> I got brooms in the engine room. It's fine. Right. Yep. 700 grand. You want every damn one of them in there. The guys are just loving it. We're just going to start turning and burning and just rip gear till we got to go in. Oh just keep pounding this, this area, you know? Get what we can while we can. Fast and furious. Oh. Captain Sig and crew haul their final pot of the trip before turning to port. Oh, 
Count. That was a 900 count pot. Pretty good. And that should get us full. So that is a deckhand's dream. That's captain's dream. Love it. Pow! That's just like winning the lottery, especially after the start we had. 230 miles southeast. Start a paradigm. On the Cape Caution. Another fishery, Western Paradise 2016. That we're going to have probably two thirds of our gear fishing in short order to start this season on the fast track. After delivering his 320,000 pound Opelio quota, Captain Wild Bill Bukrowski is back on the hunt. We're going to hit it hard, and so with any luck, we're going to end this with a relatively quick trip, a lot of crab, and a, a nice little bonus of cash. This time for 150,000 pounds of bear dive. This is why I didn't go to school so I can do this. Oh, yeah, third eye, woo! And with a $227,000 bounty on the line. We've got this area that we've done all this work, and every time we got near it, we had bare eye, and we were looking for opies. So we're back, and now we're going to try to find the bare eye and avoid the opies. The skipper goes all in on familiar grounds. Hopefully that doesn't bite me. If we can do this trip really fast, we can uh, make more money for less crab pot. So hopefully all that bear dye we saw is still here. We're somewhat rested. Everything's serviced. All we need now is bear dye crab. I've got a few strings left to go, but go ahead and get a bite deep. Sounds good. We're going to get them in the water and start hauling them, see what we got. Sorry, guys. It's not done. Oh, that the breast is done. I mean, we can have pieces of the breast. Yeah. Woo. Oh, I'm in Got a problem here. Tastes this. Tastes salty to you? Water tank with salt water. Really? I think we have leaks somewhere. You just, is it taste or what? Yeah. Ooh, horrible. Because we don't have enough, we don't have enough bottled water to do the full trip. That's really news, actually. We get this gear in the water, we can look in the tank and see, see if there's any cracks. To inspect the damage, the crew must set and clear the deck of gear. It's a problem. All we can do is try to fix it. All right. Thanks, boss. I don't believe it. It's crazy. Well, fresh water. It's tainted. It's a real game changer. We have another full tank of water. We just got to find out where the tank was breached. We have basic troubleshooting. And if that doesn't work, the alternative is fish as long as we can on a bottled water supply and then head in. If the crew can't stop the leak, the boat will lose two days and 11,000 bucks on a trip back to town. Let it go. We'll get it figured out after we get the pots in the water. Can't really afford to be shut down. 185 miles northwest of Dutch Harbor. Hey, Martin. On the Cape Caution. I'm anxious to get through these pots. So we're wasting time. With salt contaminating their fresh water supply. Once we get our bullets in the water, we're going to try to figure out why we have a breach. If we do have a breach, 
Captain Wild Bill Bukrowski pushes his crew to clear the deck and find the problem. It's not shutting us down just yet, but I mean, you can't live without water. Water is essential. So somewhere we got some contamination. So after this thing comes off, we'll go look at that tank for an obvious crack or something. We'll see if we can identify where the leak's coming from. Yeah, Roger. After setting their final pot. So let's get the boards off of the hats in that tank and see if we see water coming in somewhere. We gotta get moving, gotta fix this thing. The crew scrambles to remove the deck boards. If we can, we gotta try to find where the leak is. Might not, might not find it out here. It might have to be somewhere you drain the tank and hop in it. Could be on the outside of the boat leaking in. Could be. Oh, yeah, I see it. Really bad crack on the back side of this. Like, hey, Zach, you see where this pipe connects to our tank in the hole? It's cracked right here. And that's where we're getting all the salt water and our fresh water. We're pretty lucky. One nice thing is we have two tanks, and one of them is isolated, so we have one tank of good fresh water on board. We'd have half the water, but we'd be able to go on water rations and keep fishing effectively. With the crack isolated to only one of two tanks. Nick, if we could cut that fill tube off, and we could make a cover for it. Roger. The crew can plug the contaminated tank and keep the other salt-free. Would you like me to put something on the outside, maybe make something out of buoys and post clamps? Yeah, we're not gonna just try to patch this thing. Have on the outside and end up going to town. Roger, I, I just was relaying in front of the relay what was happening down here. No, we're not taking the easy way out. We're taking this thing. We're... Okay. With the damaged pipe now exposed. Brand new short blade. We'll see how this works. I don't know. Nick can get on with the repair. We should be able to pull this thing up. Nikki's gonna fix all of it. Uh, look for this little kit that we have. In case the boat gets a crack. Does the engineer fix the mechanical or does the deck boss for a boat? Look out the window. There's one guy that fixes it, the deck boss, Nick. So, I don't know. Right now, we have this plug. We're going to plug that fill hole and beat the sink down. Oh, that's pretty tight. Yeah. I like it. All right, boss. We have that thing sealed up like four knocks. All right, get the deck back together, and then we'll be back on the road. All right, sounds good. Thank you, thank you. Pretty happy that we were able to fix this. We're not taking on any more salt water, so we can continue on and hopefully on some pretty damn good fishing. But time will tell on that one. On the wizard. We got it, everybody. We do. Let me, see, let me see your faces. All right, guys. This is as bad as weather as we haul in. Captain Keith Colburn preps his crew to pull bear dye pots in heavy seas. We'll do this as long as we can get away with it relatively safely, all right? So we're going to grab the NA, stack it aft, get the crab off the boat, come high. To keep them safe, the crew will head to shelter between pots. OK. All right, guys, stay safe. All right, Joe. Hauling high, boys. Hauling high. Oh, hauling high. <coughs> Head on out and be safe. Roger, Good. Head on out, watch the rail, watch the rail, watch the jump. As soon as that hatch opens and the guys go out on deck, it's just like the gate at the rodeo. Hang on. Heads up. Weather is gnarly right now. 
You know, crab fishing is dangerous even on a flat, calm day. You start stacking up 30-foot seas and it gets incredibly dangerous. More dangerous than I'm comfortable with, I'll put it that way. You got your set up, dude. even if they're all bare at night. Well, 21 hours. Crap's looking pretty oaky like right now. Not a lot of numbers. Hey, as soon as you got the crap clear, get your ass off, Jack. Clear, clear, I'm out of here. Head man, where are you? Yeah. Ouch. Well, that sucks, huh? All right, okay. Um, it'll be a minute. I'll give you guys a shout out, Max. Yeah, I think now that we're into the meat of this storm here, what we're seeing is a lot bigger waves. But now, pretty much every wave is a 30 footer, and uh, I'm not liking it. Green light, heads up. There they are. It feels like we're sitting still and we're doing almost six and a half knots. These waves are moving at a pretty good clip right now. A lot of oakies here. The other problem is this. Is... Let's see. I'm on the side, damn it. It's gonna be a real long day, I'll tell you that right now. Waves are definitely increasing in size out here. Our southwest here has all been just absolutely blank, nothing whatsoever. I'm giving up. We got a lot of ground to cover. Whoa, watch out. Watch out. Holy Holy f Are you all right? Hold on here. Okay. Are you I'll sure? A 15 foot wave broke over the launcher, driving crewman Tyler Gateman straight to the deck. Short a man, and with an intensifying storm. Get off the deck. Captain Keith has no choice but to shut down. 100% injury rates. It's like professional football. You come out here, you know you're going to get injured at some point. 
question is just how bad. Where's that? Where's the kid? Just curious how your how your knees feel. It's sore. Real sore. Which is it just both right on your kneecaps or both, what? Yeah, straight kneecap. Missed the knee pads, both knees. And I jacked my neck a little bit. So come in, ice those knees up real good. Okay, ice your neck, whatever you gotta do. All right. The weather's gonna come down. We're gonna find some crab. I banged up, is he? He's hurting. I mean, if he says he's hurting, he's hurting. I know. Real tight. Can't really move my neck much. My knees are just. I'll make it out there. You know, these guys need me, and I would never leave my brothers behind, so I'll take a quick break, and hopefully everything will fix itself. The weather's not cooperating. We got a man down now with Tyler's knees being banged up. Chances of us putting a 200 pot stack on this boat. It's just too risky right now. Man, I want a horrible start. This is great. The greatest thing could ever happen to that kid. He's gonna go home and be a man. He makes it through this. I just hope that I don't get nobody hurt. down uh, southeast, away from the fleet that zoomed in on us. We're all alone. The skipper has moved 45 miles southeast of the nearest boat, searching for untapped grounds. Away from all those cutthroat pirates. Baiting a pot, a hundred pound metal door crashed onto the head of deckhand Philip Hillstrand. Out here. He, he just got hurt last year. That missed a OP season because he got his hand crushed. The door came back down on my head, gave me a cut. I'm okay. I don't, I don't feel dizzy or anything. Door hit you? Yeah, the door came back down. It's said laying on top of the pot. Yeah, it weighs like 100 pounds. Yeah, it's, it's just a decent amount of blood. Get over here by the light. Could use like one stitch or something. No, we can. It's fine. I'm going back to work. I showed you my blood. Just wear, it. Hey, I act, act, uh, huh? fill up. Wear a hat though. Don't, okay. don't, don't let it get infected. Clean hat. All right. Go back to work. Get some blood going. No blood. No guts. No tears. This is the worst thing that happens. Uh, Get a staph infection out here real easy. There's a little bait and stuff. That's why I worry. Okay, no pain, no pain. Bring it on, suckers! Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta find some crap. Let's go, let's go. On the time bandit. Shoo, I'm nervous as heck. I'm very nervous. We're all alone down there. Captain Jonathan Hillstrand has set his pots 45 miles from the nearest boat. Anything could happen out here. All of a sudden, there's a spot where everyone missed. There's the rest of our boat load. 
With his quota still left to catch, the veteran skipper needs his gamble to pay off. All right, let's all ask. We need to pull some gear. So everyone be careful. Let's go. <laughs> It all comes down to this, what we see in our own gear. We're on our own. Come on, baby. We'll see what happens here. Yeah, baby, that's more like it. Woo! That's more like it. It's full of crap. It's chuckered. What we get, Junior? so fast, man. If you would have asked me, you know, five hours ago, I'm happy to be right here. Wyatt, let's see Wyatt throw the hook. I'm just trying to see what kind of guy we got here. Flushed with crab. Wyatt, get up there. Get on the hook. The skipper gives the new horn, Wyatt Harshfield, a chance to flail at the rail. I'm about two feet from the buoy. Right. You got it. Get him, Wyatt. Get him, Wyatt. We've kind of got like a little initiation. We've all gone through it. First time throwing the hook. We'll see if you still have a job. We'll see if he's fired or not. Throw it, Wyatt! Get your money! Get our money! Better throw it. Oh, you better throw it. Yeah! yeah. 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 Nice shot, Wyatt! Oh, he keeps his job. <laughs> Yeah! Woo -hoo, woo -hoo. We got ourselves a grappler. He's got the height. Not showing up, baby! Big, big fat one! Clean, clean, some fresh, fresh! Yeah, we can definitely finish this trip on and probably finish the season, so. Rumble the boys! Welcome! Some crabs, and we're happy about that. Looking really good here. Yeah, some really nice big ones. Thank you. <laughs> I was plotting a course around the island <laughs> about four hours ago now. I'm happy to be right here. We're grabbing, baby! And we seem to be on the grab so everyone's in good spirits. The further along we get on this trip, it's just gonna get better. Yeah, baby! Fish has been all right. There's not a lot of guys around here, so I'm thinking we got a chance. That's all we need. All day. If it's got 200 in it, I think we should dump it back. I mean, we had like over over five pots in a row with over 200, so we're just marking our territory. We did a good job today, man. Hats off to my crew. Everybody did a damn good job today. This is decent. This is decent fishing. A guy can go home. A guy can do some damage here. We're crab fishing now. 70 miles southeast on the 113-foot time bandit. Captain Jonathan Hillstrand sends his crew back out for battle. Scrap 30. Yeah! yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah! We 
know, we're way behind the gun. I've never been this far behind the gun ever. We had to sit down the next day, wait for a blind dog to fly home to see his baby, and then wait for our new guy to come out. While in Dutch, the skipper dropped off one deckhand and picked up another. So we got a new guy. His name is Wyatt. He's a good kid. I haven't talked to him much. All I care about is bringing him home safe and uh, catching these rest of these damn crap. I sound like your mother right now, don't I? I'm a mean mother. Fresh out of high school, Wyatt has graduated to the University of the Bering Sea. OK, man, have fun. Carry on. Go talk to the guys. You bother me. <laughs> this is great. The greatest thing could ever happen to that kid. He's going to go home and be a man. He makes it through this. I just hope that I don't get nobody hurt. So I'm down uh, southeast, away from the fleet that zoomed in on us. We're all alone. The skipper has moved 45 miles southeast of the nearest boat, searching for untapped grounds. Away from all those cutthroat pirate Baiting a pot, a 100-pound metal door crashed onto the head of deckhand Philip Hillstrand. Out here. He, he just got hurt last year. That missed a OP season because he got his hand crushed. The door came back down on my head, gave me a cut. I'm OK. I don't, I don't feel dizzy or anything. The door hit you. Yeah, the door came back down. It said weighing on top of the pot. Yeah, it weighs like 100 pounds. Yeah, it's, it's just a decent amount of blood. Get over here by the light. Could use like one stitch or something. No, it can. It's fine. I'm going back to work. I showed you my blood. Just wear, yeah. Hey, yeah. Act, act, uh, huh? fill up. Wear a hat though. Don't, okay. don't, don't let it get infected. Clean hat. All right. I'm going back to work. Get some blood going. The blood. No guts, no tears. This is the worst thing that happens. Uh, Get a staph infection out here real easy. There's a little bait and stuff. That's why I worry. Okay, okay. It doesn't hurt. Bring it on, suckers! Hey, 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 hey. I gotta find some crap. Alrighty. Not too far off the mark. Let's go, let's go. On the time bandit. Shoo, I'm nervous as heck. I'm very nervous. We're all alone down there. Captain Jonathan Hillstrand has set his pots 45 miles from the nearest boat. Anything could happen out here. All of a sudden, there's a spot where everyone missed. There's the rest of our boat load. With his quota still left to catch, the veteran skipper needs his gamble to pay off. All right, so let's all ask. We need to pull some gear. So everyone be careful. Let's go. <laughs> Get it. I that you can comes down to this, what we see in our own gear. 
We're on our own. Come on, baby. We'll see what happens here. Yeah, baby, that's more like it. Woo! That's more like it. It's full of crap. This chucker. Come to mama. Yeah, Junior. so fast, man. If you would have asked me, you know, five hours ago, I'd go, oh, I'm happy to be right here. Wyatt, let's see Wyatt throw the hook. I'm just trying to see what kind of guy we got here. Flushed with crab. Wyatt, get up there. Get on the hook. The skipper gives the new horn, Wyatt Harshfield, a chance to flail at the rail. I'm about two feet from the buoy. All right. Got it. Get it, Wyatt. Get it, Wyatt. We kind of got like a little initiation. We've all gone through it. First time throwing the hook. We'll see if you still have a job. Then see if he's fired or not. Throw it, Wyatt! Get your money! Get our money! Better throw it. Oh, you better throw it. Yeah! yeah. 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 Nice shot, Wyatt! Oh, he keeps his job. <laughs> ourselves a grappler. He's got the height. One hundred eighty five miles north of Dutch Harbor. On the one hundred thirteen foot time bandit. Uh, On deck. I gotta get home quick, gotta make some money, gotta pay for diapers and all that bull. 25-year-old crewman Kyle Dyer awaits a delivery date of his own. Every last crab counts. Every crab is a diaper for Kyle and his wife to change. The birth of his first child. I'm responsible for these guys' lives, and there's a lot of family on this boat. So a lot of responsibility when they look up at me. I see all of, you know, Freddie's two newborns, and blind dog's baby not yet to be. I'm like the mama possum with the babies on their back. I'm not going to let any of my babies fall off my back. There it is. Yeah, I got the minute you hold that little baby, your whole life's changed, bro. You're going to say hallelujah. This is a real life. <laughs> I'm trying to be a bad daddy or ever. <laughs> Okay, guys. We're gonna get out of here. Let's set this gear on some better crap. Hey, do you mind if I use the phone? My wife had an ultrasound today. You go ahead and give her a call, and I'll, I'll eat my little breakfast. Everyone eat, eat some food. Eddie's got some good food for us. Hey. How did the uh, ultrasound go? Potential health complications. The baby's due date is being moved up. Do you like this? The food of your 
What is going on? Tell me. The, ba the baby's not growing right, and so they need to get the baby out. That sucks. I don't want to see you miss that. I'll try my best to get you home. So I just got to get this gear back in the water as fast as I can and get my crap. Thank you, John. Basically, just don't have babies when you're out here opelio fishing. I think the baby's name should be opelio or snow baby, snow crab baby. I have a real nightmare where a guy has to go home. The weather's definitely come up and making it a, more of a bitch. I got to love this boat because Blind Dog's wife wants him home for the delivery of the baby. Under pressure to deliver his crab and get deckhand Kyle Dyerly to the maternity ward. I'm on a mission. Captain Jonathan Hillstrand launched a desperate Hail Mary set on new grounds. It's real crucial we're going against the green. I mean, everybody else is over there. This could be the wrong thing to do, but we'll find out. With 58,000 pounds left to catch. OK, guys. A young deckhand's hopes and a veteran skipper's offload are both riding on this string. I love you, I care about you, so we need crab in these pots. Let's go, let's go. Got his paws through the wall, baby. We're checking our first pot here, and this will tell us a lot. Turn it burning, baby. Turn it burning. Turn it burning. Dude, oh yeah. A lot of stress on this one. It's gonna calm my nerves down. Not looking. Tell me when it comes up. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was intense. That was intense there. Oh. <laughs> One sixty-five. <laughs> Not too shabby. A lot better than where we came from. Come on, lady, look. Come on, go. Quick as you humanly possibly can dump it back, dump it back. We have a chance now. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Just made his day. All he wants is these tanks full. I can't stop. I love you, man. 195. Yeah! See how much room is in that tank. That much room! That much room! <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen no one do that. <laughs> We almost got her done. Two more pots, guys, and that's it. I'm so happy for you, Kyle. Your wife's gonna 
cry when she finds out. No! Oh! Dude, you lucky son of a little bit. You can go see that baby before. Your wife's gonna be so happy when you call her. But you're not calling her yet, because you got possible. Miracle, magic, it's magic, baby. 450 miles northwest of Dutch Harbor, on the 107-foot saga. Crunch time. I only have two days to fish. I need to leave on the 22nd for offload. I had planned to bring in two tanks minimum. The prospecting ate up a lot of time. One and a half weeks into his Opelio season, Captain Jake Anderson is staring at empty tanks and a 470,000 pound quota. Does the plant care? No. I have a delivery date. I have no choice. I need 45,000 pounds to be completely where I want to be. There is a lot of pressure riding on me right now. When we set this, which we're going to set like right now, you're going to have to be quick. We only have so many days left. Jake's ready to pick up the pace and get his pots in the water. It's Kenny. I have no idea. Please look for Kenny. But deckhand Kenny Jensen didn't get the memo. We're on time for this. Did they wake you up already? Everybody's up. Everybody's been up. Yeah. Sleeping on the job, when it on the line. Another one of Kenny's bold moves. Since joining the saga. You're not supposed to be drinking. Not on the job. Kenny has struggled with his demons. His focus. Jake and his drama. And his attitude. Kenny, get your off the deck. It's not really okay at all. I'm just trying to stay calm. Looks like a zombie. Please, Kenny, let's not do that anymore. Every second you waste matters. We'll get there. It'll happen. It's stuff like this that adds up. I got a set. Go ahead and let it ride, Sean. Here we go. Right. Boom's off the dynamite. I'm concerned. Very concerned. And I still have a take that has it needs to be topped off. Just to make a processing plant happy. With an offload slated in just 48 hours. All I need is 20 more thousand pounds and I have a tank of crab. I've only got one full string that I can haul. One chance and just land on crab. Captain Jake Anderson's next string will have to hit, or the skipper will come in short. I have a gut feeling there's going to be something in this. Hopefully it's full crap. Gonna fill the tank with that. I really thought that there was gonna be a lot of crab coming on. Looks like we're eating off food stamps. <sighs> Please let it get better. Please let it get better. Oh, no crab. Hey, in the ditch. No. 
shot through the dip. You know, Kenny was already on my mind, you know. Pissed off at him for the way he talks, and it's just, you know, I just, I give up. It just, I get irritated. I don't want him in my head anymore. Oh, I like there's a lot of crowd right now. Staring at low numbers. You gotta get better than that. So over this. The skipper has no tolerance for Kenny's bad attitude. There's much more going on than just throwing the hook. I'm tired of his stupid mouth. And Jake making me throw hell far into stupid buoys. Oh, that's all right. Kenny's got it. Jake's got to figure it out. But I'm not out here for nothing. Jake's really, uh, Jake's really a uh, hit or miss. I want to. Kenny, get your up to the wheelhouse right now. Yeah, you, right now. Just heads off. I hate having to yell at people. Throw me a bad attitude for that. I'm pissed about it. I don't say nothing, Jake. And I come up and I get This boat don't need you out there. I'll fire it right now. I should for sleeping on the floor. And I was nice about it. And I giving you because where are you? Standing by the rail the whole time. Winding around. That's all you do. I work all the time. I know what the you do. So do they. What was the matter with me having a backbone? I ain't your little <laughs> I'm your captain. I clean all the spots that they don't clean. All the spots they don't clean, I clean. And above my <laughs> this is how I get treated. Done. Quit it. I just I couldn't have it in my head anymore. Kenny, I mean, he just wants to separate himself from the others. He only wants to notice what he does on the boat. But that's his own fault. I'm finishing my duties, what I have left to do. And I'm done here. We get the Dutch later. Back talk the skipper. Gave that a job. Oh, yeah! I'd like to see each one of those guys hollow string. And I guess I'll probably have to go down, which is not the end of the world. I want these guys to learn, but I don't want it to be at the expense of the rest of the crew. All right, hey, we got two strings here. What I'm thinking is maybe have you two guys run the gear and stack a string of pieces so I don't know who would be first to do it or what you guys want to figure out, but explain it to me. Oh, I'll do it. I'll do the first one. Oh, look at all that excitement. Looks like Zach gave up the first opportunity, which I'm disappointed. I think that you're getting a shot at maybe being the captain of one of these boats. And the most enthusiastic thing you can say or do is go. I don't know. I was sure cut from a different mold. This isn't a race to me at all. There's no competition here by mine. Well, if it is, I'm already ahead. I already ran a boat this summer. So 30 pots really isn't that big of a deal. What's up, buddy? Well. How did the conversation go on who was going to run gear first? It wasn't much of a conversation. I was just like, I'm doing it first. I guess we could have flipped the coin or something, but I don't know. I'm jumping to run the boat, so. Grab my 
Dialed in on the crab, Captain Wild Bill Bukrowski has been giving hauling lessons. So far, I'm a little disappointed in Zach's motivation to learn how to fish. Part of me wonders if he even wants the job. There's so much that is right here for the asking for Zach, and there's so much that he, for whatever reason, doesn't seem to want to step up, step up and ask, you know, and grasp or grab or go after. I'm really perplexed about the whole deal. But yeah, I want to get him up here. And we're now six tenths of a mile away from the first pod. After giving deck boss Nick McGlashan his shot, it's time for the captain's son, Zach, to take the wheel. What I'm thinking is we got like three strings left over here. We'll run those. Everything should have silk on it. Uh, I think, Zach, you can run this next string. So you might head up there and see what you got to do. Get it figured out, let the guys one day know when they gotta be out there and... Okay. In the beginning, you should go for perfection. Go for like the smoothest, most exact motion you can. You know, it's, look at it as like your own competition every string. Okay. So you're pretty much gonna be running west. You gotta, this should be a pretty easy string to run other than it's in the dark. So. Have some fun, but think about it. You want to be the best you can be, so. Okay. Zach's in good I think he's going to do good. He's got to do good. Coming up. Give me help. Fix it. Don't make my shots too tough. I don't want to look bad. Oh, Captain's on deck again. Oh, a little bit different for me is trying to find these bags at night. The few times I have run gear, it's been during the daytime. So, nighttime is a whole nother game. I'm not worried about making my dad proud. I'm just worried about doing a good job, keeping the guys safe. You know, I've been around it both this summer. And even if he doesn't ever pat me on the back for it and publicly say that I did a good job, I know I did a good job. The next step for me is just, you know, running crab boats. Besides the buy into a boat and something, I hope that I'm that option to go with. It has nothing to do with me being aggressive about it. I still, I want it. I just, you don't have to always be the first guy through the door. Two more in the water here. Now I gotta figure out what to do with them. Last one coming up, guys. Good job, thank you. Fantastic job, man. the moment of truth, get the report from the boss. How'd you do? I was gonna ask you that question. Seemed like there was uh, pots there all the time, so that's what it takes. Sure. What do you think I have to do more of 
to be up here more. Obviously, you're the stamp of approval. I'll tell you this short and sweet. I really would like you to come up and talk about how and why more. For me to be involved in that vote, I would like to see a lot more effort on this. You have your foot in the door with the tendering. I just don't want you to think that anybody's ever just going to say, here, Zach, go crabbing. With... I never said that. I'm just telling you, Zach, if you, if you want the seal of approval, if you want to do it, you got to put more effort into it. Come talk to me. I'll be happy to try to explain some of this to you. That's I, part of the reason I'm still doing this, is so you can make the step. And I know I'm sometimes at saying thanks, and you did a good job. But at the end of the day, it's my goal to do the best job I can, and I'd love to teach you more about what I do. I'm trying to push you up the stairs, man. It's better sit down. All right, I just, well, we said that. Appreciate that. Alrighty. The seas are really stacked up. Right now, the tide's running to the west, and we have a, a big northwest wind, which is a pretty combination. It's crazy. This came out of nowhere. It's uh, not a lot of fun right now. On the 108-foot Cape Caution, the best of all my strings were in this area right here. And it's a pretty good sized little spot. I'm going to set a little bit south, then I'm going to go a little deeper. And if they're working towards the deep, we should run right into them. Captain Wild Bill Bukrowski has only 20,000 pounds of Ophelio crab left to catch. All righty, let's get ready. Before he makes the switch to Baradai. Hopefully through these pots I have the remaining crowd we need to meet our quota. Alright, now we're just racing his time. Meet our opening quota, meet our offload time, all the stuff going on. I was going to do a little training exercise, but I'm getting trained myself on these. It's kind of lumpy from a weird direction, and anybody can haul crab pots on a lake throw a little lump in there and things change. I want to get Zach in the wheelhouse. I really do. He's got a lot to learn in this one. This season. All right, hey, we got two strings here. What I was thinking is maybe have um, you guys run the gear and snag a string of beans. Nope. Wild Bill had hoped to motivate his son to take more initiative. Oh, look at all that excitement. But Zach hasn't always taken the bait. And the most enthusiastic thing he can say or do is go, One is make sure Zach has the knowledge to follow behind me. So far, I'm a little disappointed in his, Zach's motivation to learn how to fish. He's got an opportunity that such a small number of people in the world will ever have. And is he gonna watch it go by? Look out, look out. The problem is you have to take control when you're in this position. There's a little potential for banging people up in this tonight. Probably better that I just do it myself. Woo! The weather has picked up. Hunter needs to be safe back there. This is crazy. We got some crazy big swells coming through here right now. over the starboard wall whoa, whoa, look out. and nearly crushed 22-year-old greenhorn Hunter Cooper with an 800-pound pot. Watch the line, watch the line. Zach's quick reaction prevented a fellow crew member from getting caught in the bite and dragged overboard. Almost crushed. 
That was real close. Hey, Zach. Yeah. Good reaction. Yeah, oh. good Zach did a great job. He's gotten to be a, a damn good deckhand. But it's a little different going from there to here. There's so much that is right here for the asking for Zach. You know, you want to back your own. You want to, you want to advance your, your family. But the jury's still out. One hundred eighty-five miles northwest of Dutch Harbor. Yeah, I can't believe it. we're done on the wire for the OP season 2016. On the 108-foot Cape Caution. Well, my delivery time set, my delivery date set. It's a little bit nerve-wracking. We need to see some numbers today. That's the whole thing. I'm trying to get to town, trying to get our quota, trying to make this offload time. We don't have time. Looks pretty dandy. Looks pretty healthy. Bing. I've been just fighting the clock in numbers and pots. Two two zero. If we can keep this up, we're gonna make it. This is what we need right here. Yeah, we're almost done with the season here. As long as there's no major surprises today, it's over. We got a problem here. Something wrong with oh, the launcher. The launcher just shifted real funny. Check that first ramp. The pin is out. Uh, couldn't have the worst time. Two pins connect the hydraulic arms to the launcher. When you shake the pot, after a while, it, it uh, things come loose. Without them, the hydraulics can't power the launcher, and the boats can't fish. All around, not good. Nick jumped right in, and I mean, he had the tools coming out. He had the rack off, and kind of prompted everybody to give him a hand. Deck boss Nick McGloshan takes control of the fix. He's got a deeper, like, drive embedded into him. Nick's more old school than Zach. Bill's son, Zach, assumes a supervisory posture. Zach may stand there and say he wants to be captain, but is he just kind of letting this thing go by because he knows I'm not going to just walk away and give it to him? Yeah, it's fixed. Almost done. Ah! This couldn't come at a worse time. All right. Hopefully this quick fix is going to work for us. I don't know. He's coming out. I hope. That'd be great if we're, uh, if we're there. How are we looking, guys? Hopefully this thing lasts another four hours. Good to go? All right. So we are back in business. Yes. Finish the season. Let's get it done. It could have been a disaster. We're still within the window. I mean, if we can keep up a similar pace, get out of here, and the weather's supposed to be favorable, we can still make our arrival time. So ladies and gentlemen, this is our open season. We'll deliver this, and off to bear that we go. On well, the 155-foot wizard. We need a new home. <laughs> Doom is gone. Gloom is gone. We're way below that at this point. Just not enough to pay the bills. Not enough. After we get these 50 pots on here, we get the heck out of here. Get back down to the Z string, or the Z set, which we dubbed because it was shaped like a Z. We haven't even checked a pot there. <laughs> but we're excited. We're excited because it's a new spot. Keith will stack and make a move towards his eastern gear. Get these rounded up and uh, get back where hopefully we will find our future. OK?
To attract crab, the pot requires a bait sack and hanging cod. Guys, no bait. This one has neither. I hope no more come up without bait because I'm gonna get my kicked. two pots without bait. Obviously, the bait guy, the guy's baiting the pot, should bait the pot. Responsible for baiting the pots, Mike Paint Chips Garoppo and Jacob J.J. James. I really don't know how the hell that happened. That's just weird. You know, I legitimately don't understand how we got pots going over with no bait, and we got two bait boys at the same time. Two bait guys can't put bait fed up to two pots. I can't remember the last time I ever saw two pots in a row come up without baiting them. It's been years. When you don't bait a pot, you're not going to get anything out of it. In this cycle right now. JJ and paint chips. Come in the gear room real quick. How am I supposed to trust you if I can't trust you up there in the bait station? I can't. You're dodging work. Is there a reason why? Nope. No. Come on, guys. If we give you an order, you do it. All right? Okay. Roger. Last thing I need to be worried about right now is my greenhorns forming an alliance of stupidity in the bait station. That's probably what's going on right now. 165 miles north of Dutch Harbor on the Wizard. Coming up, we are hauling the Z string. We're hoping we got crab in the gear. That would be great. Make up for some of these lost days. After striking out in the west, Captain Keith Colburn is counting on his eastern gear to fill his tanks. We just need to get on some crab and just start fishing. Get this party started. There we go. <laughs> crab out of it. It's a good sign. Oh, yeah! Roger, roger. 108. There is crab here. As we are seeing solid crab, so what we're going to do is we're going to bank this crab. The set right back. Finally got their act together up there. We're having some issues with JJ and paint chips getting the job done. One guy stuff, the one guy cutting. Then he's two guys stuff job. <laughs> yeah, like right now that pot should have been out of the rack. Already reprimanded for sloppy work, bait boys JJ and paint chips need to pick up the pace to avoid getting an earful from the captain. Ready, set, two days. Where that pot shouldn't have been done five minutes ago, four minutes ago. Chips and JJ are just wandering up and down the deck. Just everything's in super slow mo right now for those kids. Two jugs. Hey, JJ and Paint Chips, get tired of watching the slow motion tour. We need to haul gear. Get 
Hey, JJ, can you hear me? Yeah. Go grab that bait you just hung right there. Open the jug. Show me how much bait's in the bait jug. My god, this is infuriating. Some of the jugs weren't stuffed very well at all. You don't catch crab without bait. Without bait, nothing crawls in the pot. Chips? JJ? Some of the jugs look like they're half full when they were going over the side, so I'm not sure who's stuffing frozen bait and then it settles down to nothing when it thaws out. I'm just telling you what I saw. What I saw is not a hallucination. I saw jugs going over the side with half full. Hey, shut the chips. Am I talking to you, Chips? You listen. Biggest problem you got out there is you think too little and you talk too much. All right, now I'm definitely going outside. Mike, JJ, how much bait do you got made? Uh, you guys are rock stars. You don't even got, what, enough for two or three pots? I don't know what's going on with you two. I'm tired of worrying about bait. Our biggest problem is we have the blind leading the blind up here. Here's the deal. You're in charge. You're in charge of the station, OK? That means he's your boss. That way, there'll be no discrepancy over who's responsible from here on out. If I come up here and see there's no bait done, it's going to be on your butt. All right? This is my last conversation with you guys. You just have to do what the captain says. If the captain's just wrong, he's, he's always right. The 107-foot saga. It's garbage. Garbage, garbage. We're in the wrong neighborhood. Yeah, that dirty and small on that one. We have a lot more work ahead of us, so. Can't help but to feel a little bit uh, defeated. But it's only one string. I'm going to feel a lot better, though, when I do find the crab. I will. It's just a matter of when. I, I got. Oh, I already this. Whoa! Oh! He's still going! Are you kidding me, dude? Don't tell me the hydraulics stopped. The, the pick and winch just stopped working. The hydro shut down, leaving the 800 pound pot swinging dangerously. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm trying. You guys, watch out. Gosh, damn it. Hold on if you can. Just keep holding on to it, fellas. What the f I can't wait. Then you got a rock to swing it. Really, can't have that. You're going to kill somebody. And we got lots of pressure. I don't understand this. It's almost like one of the valves is open and it's bypassing or something. Here it comes. Good job, fellas. Gosh, damn it. Don't worry about that. Just keep pushing forward. The processing plant in St. Paul closes in 11 days. I still have crab that has to go there. I don't know what I'm going to do if I don't have my crab into the plant. I can't stop hauling. Under pressure to produce, Jake continues to fish with unreliable hydraulics. Must dig through the to get to the gold. This boat, man. This is when I get mad at the people that had it before me. Austin, get the away from there.
my god. I can't work on that. I can't do that jig. What the What are we gonna do about that? We're gonna kill somebody. Pick stuck. It stopped working. My heart pounded. Hydrox wouldn't go anywhere. The pot is up in the air, swinging wildly all over the place, ready to take out everything. <laughs> oh my. The pick stopped in the air. They're trying to hold on to it, and the thing swung way out. Everybody ran, and then I dropped the boom. Hydraulics are an issue. They're pissed. You can't fish like this. It's that kind of that makes me just want to go home. I don't want to put anybody in danger. I don't want to be in danger. That's it. Game over. We're going in. Unwilling to risk a catastrophic accident, Jake leaves his gear in the water and heads for port. Came out here to make money, not to get hurt. What a good morning. On the Cape Caution, after giving deck boss Nick McGlashan his shot, it's time for the captain's son, Zach, to take the wheel. What I'm thinking is we got like three strings left over here. We'll run those. Everything should have silk on it. Uh, I think, Zach, you can run this next string. Okay. So you might. Head up there and see what you got to do. Get it figured out. Let the guys one day know when they got to be out there. And... Okay. In the beginning, you should go for perfection. Go for like the smoothest, most exact motion you can. You know, it's look at it as like your own competition every string. Okay. So you're pretty much going to be running west. You got to. This should be a pretty easy string to run other than it's in the dark. So have some fun, but think about it. You want to be the best you can be, so. Okay. Oh, captain's on deck again. I'm not worried about making my dad proud. I'm just worried about doing a good job, keeping the guys safe. You know, I, I ran a boat this summer, and even if he doesn't ever pat me on the back for it, and publicly say that I did a good job, I know I did a good job. The next step for me is just, you know, running crab boats. My dad decides to buy a new boat and something, I hope that I'm that option to go with. It has nothing to do with me being aggressive about it. I still, I want it. I just. You don't have to always be the first guy through the door. Two more in the water here. Now I got to figure out what to do with them. Last one coming up, guys. Good job. Thank you. Hey, you did a fantastic job, Jack. And the moment of truth. Get the report from the boss. How'd you do? I was going to ask you that question. I'll t tell you this short and sweet. I really would like you to come up and talk about how and why more. For me to be involved in that boat, I would like to see a lot more effort on this. You have your foot in the door with the tendering. I just don't want you to think that anybody's ever just going to say, here, Zach, go crabbing. With... I never said that. Well, I'm just telling you, Zach, if you, if you want the seal of approval, if you want to do it, you got to put more effort into it. Come talk to me. I'll be happy to try to explain some of this to you. That's I, part of the reason I'm still doing this, is so you can make the step. And I know I'm sometimes at saying thanks and you did a good job. But at the end of the day, it's my goal to do the best job I can, and I'd love to teach you more about what I do. On the 107-foot saga. I got three more days. We're about to haul my town pick. I hope we can get 80,000 pounds. 
Captain Jake Anderson bets on pots he left soaking for the last two days to finish off his Opelio quota. I'm a little bit nervous to haul my town pick, but uh, I got to stay focused now. I can't lose. This isn't a time to start losing my cool. Back to the same old crab, which is slivers. With pots coming up empty. What's going on with that one? The prospects for a triumphant ending to the saga's season are slim. Hey, this is Saga, Jake. What's going on, Jake? How's that town pick? Probably pretty good, huh? You must be halfway full by now. Yeah, I wish. Jake takes a call from his cannery. You want to come by on Saturday at noon tomorrow? Tomorrow at noon? With me? <laughs> yeah, I say one o'clock at the latest, so uh, we'll probably be out of crap by then. I just, uh, I just hauled my first string and I'm 100 miles away from you. As the season winds down. If you want, uh, we have a spot Sunday. Yeah. So do the boat's options of time slots to offload the crab. Today's Friday. Friday, so I fish all day, and then I just bolt. I take my 75 pots. I'll just do Sunday. Yeah, it's Sunday. Um, if I could get Monday, that'd even be better. But I'll, I'll, I'll get there as, as, uh, whenever you tell me I, that I can get there. OK, we'll see you then. Sounds good. Shut up! Shut up! That was the cannery. They want crap. Sunday. 80,000 pounds. I have no idea. I thought three days. The cannery's in control. They need crab, so they'll pull in every boat they can to keep the plant fed so that they don't lose revenue. We're just the we're just a pawn now. First pot. Then uh, I'm hoping to get one pick out of the gear that's at the cross. All, all my eggs are in one basket. It's a gamble. It's a serious gamble. Forced to come in early, Jake Anderson has made a grueling 160-mile, 75-pot move south. God, I hope this one's good. It's not. We're in a world of hurt. Now, all he has to do is catch a week's worth of crab in a day. Oh, please, please. <sighs> what in the God, what a bummer. Not much crap hole. Really sucks. It's just not even worth it. Two, three! What a let go. Oh, that looks like it's got crab in it. Why? Nope. It was just deceiving. Same old. Nine hours left. We need 80,000 pounds. I've got about 13. It's just ugly. Yeah, I'm not getting anything out of this string. Absolutely nothing. Still needing 880 crab per pot to reach 80,000 pounds. I don't have enough time to fill the boat. Jake's luck finally runs out. That delivery date completely screwed me. I am now definitely coming in short. <sighs> Blood pressure rising. Blood pressure rising. Stay calm. 
My guys are under pressure too, so I don't, I want to remain calm for them. No, we're, we're doing a good job with what we got. I mean, the guys should be proud. Hell, I should be proud. Hey, fellas. We're obviously not gonna get our 80,000, so I'll stack it. But let's go ahead and give it our all. We're going out strong. Fight to the very last second like it's the Super Bowl. It's a good move. Let's go get him. Try, fellas. I'm going out strong. Key off. We're gonna start stacking. I had hoped for birthday cake, steak, flaming hooks, and firecrackers tonight. I'll be lucky if I can get a few smiles out of the boys. Come on! Woo! Yeah! Let's go take it! For 16 hours, the crew hauls and stacks 75 pots. Start our double keepers. Love it! On the roll, here we go. Yeah. All right, last one with Phyllis. That's Bob. Yeah, and it's over. That's the end. All right, that's the last one, fellas. You guys can come in. The guys, uh, I'm, I'm just really proud of them. They, they really pulled through. And... Hey, this is the last one. The bad news, bears. <laughs> Jake brings in 470,000 pounds of Opelio, 30,000 pounds short of his quota. But each member of his crew will still pocket 25,000 bucks. We should all of us go home, and we can all of us go home with our heads hung high <laughs> because of what myself and the crew have done to get as far as we have. Devastating, yes. Humbled, yes. Down, never.